Conversation number five. This one's with Rick Allen Chappelle. We met at CBC, uh, Canadian Broadcasting Corporation, where I am hired to do work sometimes. And I was there the other day. I took Rick on a tour of the facilities. Um, it's a weird looking building. We ended up finding a kitchen area on the third floor. They had bo- uh, booths like you would see in a restaurant. It kind of looked like a restaurant. It felt like a restaurant, but nobody was there since it was a Sunday. Um, I think I'm going to do... It sounds decent in there since actually there's nobody there, but I think it might be cool to take people there and uh, record the future conversations in that area. Anyway, um, we went really long and was Maybe this is maybe like a, an hour or 45. Talked about uh, Devin Townsend Project, cars, cats that pee, peeing cats manually, and uh, I don't remember. Yeah. So I've already just kind of started just because. I, it's never like formal. Yeah, there's never a big like, let's go beep beep. beep. Some of them do it, and and but I just do the Wayne's World like five four. I know Joe Rogan does it. All does the he time. actually? Like he counts it in, and then he's and then they're like they play the music. A little bit more of like a wow start. Or it's a little bit of an intro, just saying okay, let's go type of thing. Yeah, this is my thing. Yeah. But then it's I don't know, I guess it's fine to do it that way, but it sets a different tone, I guess. Whatever you're going for, right? Because we did it in Ryan's um, bedroom, and just myself and my buddy Doug, and we went to his apartment. And I was like, "This is gonna be so weird because it's <laughs> like you just an apartment. Yeah. We're setting it up so much." Oh, was it like a good setup in there? Or? No, it's just because I did one where it was we were at out for dinner or something. Yeah, and I just threw the phone down on the count on the bar because we usually sit at the bar so yeah to eat and whatever and then uh just hit record and it's whatever yeah just get going and then i put it up <laughs> and it's and some people what listen to it and were like it's really funny decent just because like some old guy came and sat next to us and i was gonna say wouldn't there be like waitresses and stuff in it yeah then, and that's that's cool like i uh it's just real but i think after a certain while that maybe that might get too makes it yeah weird. like and it's really noisy everywhere. And true, true, yeah. So if someone's actually like trying to listen to it in their car or something, it might just drone out and they just sound like they're in a bar or something. Yeah. Makes sense. That's, I'm always with that with like the level of like tech I should put into something. Mm-hmm. Like, it comes down to like, just like filming my lame YouTube show or whatever. It's like, do you really need to have like tripods and lights and like five Ds and like three cameras on everything and microphones? Or like, can I just hold my iPhone in front of my face? Like how, how big are we going on this? You know what I mean? And then I always end up, it's funny, like 95% of the time I end up using just like whatever the quick little footage I got was instead of having like, it almost feels like forced, I find. Once you start filming it? Well, no, when, you, when you, you start like hardcore filming it, you know, yeah. like when you set, like you're syncing everything and the mic checks everything, you're like, I find by the time I'm done, like setting everything up, I'm just, I'm done. I don't, I don't want to be the guy on it anymore, right? I want to be behind the camera, like, yeah. I, don't, I go control freak with it, I guess. I think it's fun though. Like if you get into the routine of doing it, oh totally, like that, then it's like it becomes you're just involved in this creative process. I, I I'm not used to the routine yet. I think is that because like when I go to film those little like YouTube like tutorials, like the photo stuff or whatever, yeah. I'm always like, okay, what do I? What should I? Should I start the audio first? Should I start that camera first? Should I start the screen first? And then like, hey, are they all on? Can they all see me? Like, and then but I always forget to do an outro clap. And I'm like, shit, now when I edit, it's gonna be a bitch. Like, <laughs> so it's just not, it's not there yet. You know, I'm not locked in on the process. I just gotta figure out the process, I guess, right? So then, what you were doing is just, like, your videos are just that uh, tutorial thing. Yeah, yeah. Well, like, I do a few different things. Like, I've got a, a little YouTube show of my roommate where we like mess with cars and like we cut a Civic into a truck and like took it mudding and it went horribly. And then there's like other stuff, like my, my photo stuff, I really like doing like before and after photos. Like mm-hmm. when I do some super layered Photoshop thing or whatever, I usually post on my little page, like here's the before, here's the after. And then I think it just kind of spiraled into it one day. I was like, oh, I, like I had a, oh, I was, at a, uh, I was at a Cars and Coffee event at Porsche and I took a photo and I dug it. It was like this guy standing in front of a Porsche and it was a good shot, I think. And I edited it all and I liked it. And I was like, 
I don't want to just post the picture in the before and after or just the picture. Like, I want to talk about it. I want to say what's so cool about it. So, like, oh, I'll just may as well set up the cameras and give her a go, right? Yeah. And then from there, like, I just got into, like, photography, like, maybe a year ago. Oh, or, wow. So, like, I'm pretty pretty new to it, really, it feels like. Yeah. So, I'm just still, like, so excited when I learn something. I just want to share with everybody else. So, a bunch of my buddies are all, I'm, like, a year ahead of them, almost. You know what I mean? So I'm, they're just starting it. Exactly. Too. They're starting this year. I started last year. Yeah. So I'm just like, no, I need to do this. So try this. Try this lens. So I'm just trying to teach everybody else what I'm figuring out, right? That's and then a lot, a lot of the times, too, like they'll mess with you know, Photoshop and hit a button, and I'm like, I did not know that button existed. Like, that's all. Like we all learn from each other, yeah. too, right? So uh, I think there's like so many different ways you can do th- one task. That's the thing. Yeah. That's so many processes you could go through just to do one simple that's thing. That's the thing I'm learning too is how ridiculous some of what I was doing was. Like I had no idea how to use layer masks mm-hmm. at all. So it was like a racing stuff. And then if I messed it up, I like command Z and then if I mess it, just use layer mask. <laughs> like I've probably spent like 20 hours trying to cut something out and messing it up a little bit and not being able to go back or feather or anything. Yeah. And now I'm like, oh, I can just use select and mask. I can just brush over and it does it. It's like, yeah. I, I'm always like, anytime I spend more than like three minutes on something, I'm like, there's probably an easier way to do this, but whatever. I'll figure yeah. it out later. I still haven't found out the easier way to cut somebody out. Oh, select and mask, dude. It's yeah, the best. Yeah, but I think, well, then you still have to... You, yeah, you usually got to go it. in and brush up a little bit or something, but like, if your photo is really sharp and you've got like a good contrast line or whatever, yeah. it's so easy. Usually it's an afterthought. I'm like, oh, no, wait, I just don't want them there anymore. <laughs> there's that or there's like, I have no idea how to use the pen tool. I still totally lost on it. I try to like make a, a line and it ends up being curved and then I press something and it makes a bow over here. I like, yeah. lost on that one. So that's another one I gotta learn still. Do you have uh what's it called? The te- like a like a tablet, right? Uh, the the thing the walk the pen. There. No, I don't. The pen on the pad and you That's the one, it. yeah. <laughs> My roommate's got one apparently, but like he loaned it to his sister or something, and it's somewhere else. I'm like, damn it dude, I could so you I wanna try it before yeah. I drop, you know, six hundred bucks on something like that. But no, I, I had it. I was using an iMac for like past like five years or so, and then like last week the video card failed, and just oh. like bricked the thing. What year was it? Uh, I was like 2011, 2012. The ones that are like notorious apparently for the video card failing. Oh, okay, I had I took mine into some shop, and they told me that, and mine's in mid 09. Yeah. Uh, Mac, iMac. And they're like, oh, this thing's going to go any moment now. Yeah, well, apparently, once and they're five years old, Apple doesn't make stuff for them anymore. Yeah. Like, you're just, like, obsolete off the grid to them. Yeah, because so, I wanted to get, like, new hard drive and, and yeah. RAM in it. And they're like, well, yeah, we'll do it, but you're better off buying a brand new one because, well, you got to take the glass this out. you got to take – I pretty much have to take all this apart just to get this stuff see, to, to fix my computer, they're like – because I took it in. I was like, I don't know what's going on. They told me about, okay, this is, like, a pretty common graphics card thing. What You boot it up. And it just goes gray screen with like pink and red lines everywhere. So I was like, this is clearly marked. So I took it in, like, yeah, this is normal. They ran all the numbers and like, and your hard drive's gonna go soon too. If you've never replaced your hard drive, like you should really do that too. I'm like, okay, the bill just to get my thing back up to like a good grand. Holy crap. I'm working on this, I'm like, well, fuck that. So I'm like using my mom's MacBook Pro I borrowed from her. And then I'm just gonna say they're supposed to release a new iMac, like apparently end of this year. Yeah. So I'm just gonna like pinch pennies and then when that thing comes, go big and then be good for another five years. I guess yeah. or so however long they seem to last. Yeah. But like I was shooting out the idea, oh, honestly you two, you're all into this stuff. I'm on the fence like MacBook Pro, iMac, or going all out Mac Pro. You know, taking out a bank loan and just going hardcore. Like I, with the one of them tube looking yeah, things? Yeah, well apparently those are getting replaced soon too. But, I heard those were shit. Yeah. People it, hated them. Even Apple's like, we shit the bed on that. We're redoing it. But when they redo it, that's the thing. Do I go biggest, baddest laptop, biggest, baddest, you know, PC almost thing? Yeah. Or do I just go, I'm, I'm leaning towards iMac because I'm not portable, so I would like the bigger screen. And I feel like that, like going to the Mac Pro thing, is just like so overboard for me. Yeah. That's, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah. But I'm always like, ooh, shiny better. Like, <laughs> it's yeah. inherently um, in you. I've never really thought about going to the Mac the Pro. The full one, yeah. Just because I like the screen just all in one and just having it look nice. That's it, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm my desk has to be organized too. I'm the exact same way. But then it's like, like my desk is like a work table. It's like an A-frame, an Ikea A-frame stand thing and then just a board. And oh, then I have, car, like, I have like a, a tabletop from Ikea. 
but I never took the cardboard off. <laughs> so and I just scribble notes on my well, that's table. Decent, then, yeah. So then I'm like, I don't need to replace my table. I just gotta go to IKEA and get, get a piece of cardboard. Get a piece of cardboard. Like I just want a cardboard. I don't want the <laughs> table. Just go to like the recycling <laughs> bin or some back. Like someone's already trashed it. Yeah. That's not a bad idea. Then it'd be like when you want to sell it, it'd be perfect. Yeah, and it just frame. looks like a, it just looks like a workbench. Yeah, it would still and look fine. It's got fine. computers and hard drives on and stuff. So I'm I'm nuts about trying to get everything like more clean. I do all like music stuff and photo stuff and everything too. So like, my desk currently is all I want is my screen, my mat or my mouse and my compu- my keyboard, right? Yeah. But instead it's like there's monitors and there's an interface and there's a microphone and then there's like pics and it's, it. I try not to be OCD about it because if I like do focus on it, it's like way beyond what it should be. Yeah. Like it just, and then not everything can be wireless, and that pisses me off. And then there's like underneath the desk is just a rat's nest of cables for everything. It drives me insane. Yeah. So I've got like no light under there. Like all the lamps are pointed away from me. <laughs> just trying to just hide <laughs> it in the shadows if I can. I used to put like a, a blanket around, like a sheet, a bed sheet, just around. The so you can table. just like hide in the back. So th- everything's hidden. I thought about that, but that's where my heater is. So I just feel like if I put enough back there, I'll just like, cause a fire. <laughs> oh. <laughs> like just burn the blanket up, or my room will get heated. It's also yeah. my bedroom, right? Like it's bed, bedside table, desk covered in in things. Underneath the desk is like guitar pedals and everything, because I record everything there too, right? Yeah. So it's a it's a busy space, but. It, it has to be. It's kind of like I keep trying to get rid of a thing and then it only lasts a day. I'm like, oh, I need that thing. It comes back, you know? Yeah. Like now all the microphones are on the quick releases, so if I'm not using them, I can just toss them in a shelf or something. It's actually awesome. I've got this like couple old Shure mics that use your typical XLR in, and they, mm-hmm. but they only thread on. There's no clip or anything. They're full on, like they thread onto a mic stand. So that drove me nuts because like I want to take it off, but I got The gotta, clip is. Like, built into yeah, the like mic. the microphone. It's, it's one of those shirt, like the eldest mics. Like, you know, those old school, like, oh, silver yeah, gold things? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and full on. It's like the post comes at the bottom of it, and you, it doesn't even, like, have a rotating collar on it. It's just threaded. <laughs> so you gotta twist the mic every time. So I picked these things up on, like, Musician's Friend for, like, 18 bucks or something, and they're just a quick release system. It threads on, you know, a male side and a female side, and it's a button. Mm. So, but now when I take it off, my mic stand just has this big chrome knob on it, and it looks all weird. So I, that's the next thing that'll have to go, or I'll paint it black or something. Yeah. I go. I like my roommate always makes fun of me because like in our place, he bought a bunch of light bulbs. Like I just moved in there in like October or so, so we're still like figuring out who cleans the cat litter and like you know sure. getting everything figured out. But he went out and bought a bunch of light bulbs, a yeah. bunch of good LED bulbs because it's like part of the thing you do to save money, right? But he bought like a bunch of different light temperatures. <laughs> and it drove me nuts because like the kitchen was blue the hallway was yellow his room is like white so I went and I replaced them all with like 5,000k white all over the place yeah. and now it's like way too bright yeah. I can't I, he's, if he hears this he's going to make fun of me because I like was so anal about them all being 5k but I think I got to step it down I got to be like 3,000k or something like it's just so bad yeah and her ceiling's painted green the yeah. So all it's the, very light, so it's like you go inside and it feels like you're outside. Well, kind of, but like, literally, we argued because like I told him the ceiling was green, and he's like, no, no, the ceiling's white. The walls are green. I'm like, yes, the walls are green. That's without a doubt. Yeah. But the roof's also green, and we argued for probably like a month, and then we found a can of paint in a closet that said roof slash wall paint. I was like, ah, <laughs> they're both the same green. So now all the white light is bounced blue or green yeah. from the ceiling everywhere. So my white is now blue or green it's like oh everything looks green now. It, just a little bit yeah. but like the bathroom ceiling's yellow like it's a weird little building dude this thing was built in like the 70s yeah out in Abbotstown right and there's another thing too with like interior lights is like um I always wanted it to be like 5600 Kelvin yeah, so it's like I always want to be outside yeah, all the you time want bright clean crisp yeah but then it's like you that really fucks with you. Kind of wears you out. Yeah, like ten o'clock at night when you go to like just and everything's like oh, it's still light because your your whole system well, still thinks it's daytime. and we don't, there's not a ton of windows. So like when I went to buy the bulbs, I bought like the big bulbs. So when you crank on like the kitchen light, it's bright. Yeah, and like a couple are motion sensitive too. So like if my if my cats jump up on the counter or something, it's like Christmas. <laughs> and sometimes <laughs> you can see it. Like I'm way down the hall, but you know because they'll knock over a you know bottle of water or something, and I hear bang bang bang, and then just like glow. <laughs> Here we go again. I got like this one cat's paralyzed of mine. Okay. Her like, if you imagine you know like Joe from Family Guy. Yes. She's like that. Like she kind of like her back legs aren't so good, but okay. her fronts are torn. She's all muscular too because she drags herself everywhere. Uh, 
So she just causes shit in the middle of the night. Like, most cats will run around or whatever act crazy at 2 in the morning. If she does it, like, it's bad. Yeah. Because she, she runs into walls and she hits corners and stuff. She's just like a wrecking ball. Does it, do you have wheels? No, well, I, I thought about it back. And basically, okay, long story short, she was attacked by, like, a bird, they think, when she was a kitten. So she doesn't have a spine in the spot. Okay. Like, it, like, just clawed her. So it's like, back, nothing, back. So uh, fr- a family friend found her in a field, and she was a vet. So mm-hmm. she, like, took her back to the practice to, like, put her down. Got her cleaned up. Was like, okay, this cat's fine. I don't need to put her down. Took it in. Went to a few family members. Finally ended up as my cat. And then she got better. Like, run, jump, walk, regular cat. And I was like, this is awesome. I got, I got a good cat. I thought I got a bum cat. It was a yeah. good cat. And then she did something one day, like as an idiot, fell off a fence or something, and redid her same old injury. So now she's like kind of half back there. But when we first got her, when she was like, "Okay, they're never," she's never gonna walk. I was like, "Okay, we should get wheels or something." But then my room used to be downstairs, and everybody else was upstairs, and she'd make it up and downstairs. So it's like just dragging. Well, she'd like kind of pull herself <laughs> up the stairs. Downstairs is fine, and you can yeah. fall downstairs. And you can do that. <laughs> but she muscle her way up. So I was like, if we get her wheels, she'll like never go upstairs and if she goes downstairs it'll go bad <laughs> like yeah. if she gets run over by herself so it's kind of I, it sounds cruel but she kind of like needed I think that little push and then she got better and now I mean now I guess I'm in a one floor apartment I could do it but she still like pulls herself up on the beds and chairs and stuff so yeah. I don't see the point for it like she we used to put her in diapers too because I know she has like bladder problems or okay. whatever but she just hated it so much that I was like I would much rather mop once a week then just have this miserable cat that smells like piss. Because, <laughs> like, what are you getting, like, That's sad. there's no That's other, sad. exactly, and there's diapers full, it's, like, super gross. Instead, there's just, like, a little spot on the kitchen floor sometimes, you swiffer it, and yeah. it's fine, right? It's not really that much of a burden, and she's, like, a sweet cat, so. Because it'd be like, you almost, you have a baby now. Pretty you well. You gotta change the diapers. Pretty much. It's kind of like, like, the, the one thing that gets a lot of people is, like, you have to peer manually. <laughs> like full on. so like it took me way too long to realize I could use the litter box still but you pick her up and you aim her and, and you just squeeze her bladder and you can actually pee any cat like that if you're so inclined they hate it okay and mine's easier because your back legs don't work so she can't fight it that bad but it's like squeezing a water bottle it's like I call it like a cat super soaker like, <laughs> like it's like <laughs> oh but so that's one thing but is there a certain spot where you have to press? yeah it's like right Right above, like, if okay, it's like cat, right? Yeah. Back legs, front legs. It's right here, right in front of the back legs. So okay. I, I grab her right like under, under the rib. Yeah, like I grab her under the chest here, let her sit on my leg or something, and then yeah, literally like her back legs will be right there, and just right. You can feel like if she hasn't peed in a day, it's like big, like it's yeah. it's bad sometimes. She used to get like bladder infections, but now we're good. But that's one thing. That's like once a day, just be the cat and you're fine. <laughs> just it's, it's, pee the cat. it's my life, dude. It's normal. Oh, are you ready to go? I just gotta pee the nah, cat. Just, people are like, what are you doing after work? I'm like, oh, I gotta go home and like pee my cat. They're like, feed your cat. I'm like, no, no. Like, I got this cat. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, go, pee I gotta go pee my cat, <laughs> and then I can come out to the bar, boys. It's a weird thing when you're 22 and like responsible for peeing a cat. That'd be like a wicked <sighs> hardcore band. What? Pee my pee the cat. Pee the cat. <laughs> oh, that's that's a punk rock project just waiting to happen. And it's like, yeah, the merch. They would have the best merch. They would probably all smell like cat piss. But that could be like part pee of the, the thing. Pee the cat. You yeah. just like ammonia everything before you sell it. Yeah. And that would do it. That would do it. Or you can buy these like stuffed animals that you would like. The cat super and, soakers. Yeah. You could like load them up with vinegar or something. Or oh, there's some money there. Yeah. That's good. And then they have a mascot. It's not actually a cat. It's, it's a not. Cat. It is a cat. Oh, is it? What if you like? It's not actually a cat. Like it's, it's, it's not. A, it's a chihuahua. Yeah. <laughs> it's something just like totally left field. It's like some kind of bird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but like the, the pee the cat's one thing, but like the thing that gets a lot of people is like when she poops. Yeah. She just poops. Like that just happens. It happens wherever she is at the time that she poops. She's got no control over it. So a lot of people are like really weirded out by that. But if you have a dog, you take your dog for a walk, poo somewhere. You got to pick it up. It's just the same thing, really. But it, it just, she, the cat does it yeah, on like, its own? Yeah, like, literally, she, I don't think she has any control over it whatsoever. Because it, it seems to kind of freak her out. Like, you'll hear her kind of, like, oh, like kind of stomping her feet or something. Like, she's kind of like, what the fuck is going on here, boys? And then, yeah, I'm just like, oh, cat shit. And you just clean it up. Just like you would a dog, right? Like, you have yeah. a bag, toilet paper, whatever, flush it down the toilet. But the consistency of a cat is different. It's totally out of left field. Like, it'll be, I swear she doesn't shit for, like, two days straight. And then it's like 
Taco Tuesday or something. Like, then it's just like a waterfall. Gosh. The other day she got diarrhea. And it was just like I, my roommate's girlfriend called me. She's like, You got to come home from work right now. If this cat keeps shit like this, she's going to die of dehydration. And I was like, Fuck. So I told my boss, I'm like, Okay, I got, like, there's a catastrophe going on at home. And it was. Yeah. Like, I have this, I'm all into like cars and like racing stuff, right? So when I can't go be on a real track, I've got the full on like simulator at home with mm. full on like the shifter and the pedals and everything, right? And I have the seat out of an old Camaro I used to have. And she loves to just hang out there. It's a yeah. comfy chair. <laughs> Everywhere, all over it. Holy crap! And I just threw it out. I couldn't bring myself to like do it. I'm like, nope. That was an eighty dollar chair. That's not eighty dollars worth of time. <laughs> out you go. Yeah. I still haven't replaced it yet, but there's. I do my house is me and my roommate are both super into cars, so there's just parts everywhere. Like our yeah. our deck has. I think we added a full race car if we tried. Holy crap! There's like a block. There's two turbos. There's nitrous. There's tires. There's a transmit. Like. You could just build a car on the deck. Yeah. I think it's way against, like, any building code to have that much weight out there. Oh, probably. Me and him still are. He's like, no, it's fine. I'm sure if the neighbor, but it's all depending on if the neighbors are going to report. Well, my deck, it's enclosed. Oh, okay. So they don't know. I mean, there's, like, literally dashboards hanging from the ceiling. (laughs) But there are, uh, not our roommate, but, like, the the person beside us has, like, a wood shop on their deck. Like, they're cutting stuff on, like, miter saws at 7 o'clock at night. I'm like... I think I can get away with some shit. Yeah. If you're doing that. So it seems to be a pretty, like, lax place. Mm. There was, I, every once in a while I go, I went kind of dickish with these people. It's mostly, like, an old people building, but me and my roommate are both, like, 20-something, and right. there's no rules against it. You just, you live there. So I think they're a little not cool with it, but yeah. can't do anything, and they're super sweet. But you get, you get one parking spot undercover, and then there's a bunch of trees that are, like, first come, first serve. But it works out pretty well. Everybody there has, like, one roommate, and there's about enough, so I get mine, and then he parks where he parks, and yeah. we're good. But then his girlfriend stays with a bunch, so there's another spot, and then it kind of it got pretty crowded for a while, so when it happened, we'd park across the street or something. You don't make a fuss about it. You just got to do what you got to do. But then uh, they started to be kind of dicks about it, and I was like, well, we, we, we legit all live here. We're yeah. not, I'm not just inviting buddies over, and, like, we're taking five cars here and then taking one car downtown. Like, Mm-hmm. We're here for a reason. Everybody who's car here is living here, staying here. Yeah. So they went kind of dickish about it. And the one lady drives uh, like a big Dodge Ram. And she doesn't need a big Dodge Ram. But she can't park in her spot, apparently, if there's like other cars. Because she can't manage her way in there. So I got this 1977 GMC Dually. Like <laughs> long box, double cab. Biggest truck there. Man. And I parked it, taking up like three spots <laughs> for a week. And denied I knew who owned it. It had a plate on it. Like it was fully legit. But I was just like, no, I don't know what truck that is. It's a cool truck, though. And, then, and you just brought that in from work? Or? No, it was like my truck. Oh, okay. I have way too many cars like stashed in fields and at grandparents' houses and stuff. I'd had this thing for a while because it's like a dream truck of mine. Right? It's mint. It's like a big block tow truck. Yeah. But I was like, I, I pay like 50 bucks a month to store it at my mom's place. And I was like, well, this month, let's, talk that, let's put a permit on it and park it here because they're going to be dicks. I'm going to call them on it. Because the lady was like, oh, I can't park there. I was like, I guarantee you can park there with a bigger truck. She's like, no, 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 my truck's too big. Nope, I got the biggest truck I could find, and I pulled it off. So I was like, no, no more excuses. You're done. She's just not good at, at driving as well. She's like, she's like 80, and she's really little, and her truck's huge. I just don't think she has the spatial awareness. Yeah. And, like, it's covered in dents, too, so, like, I know she hits stuff. Mm. So I, I think she's kind of nuts, too. Like, apparently she, like, corners my roommate in the hallway sometimes. Like she just, I, th- I think she actually like waits behind her door and she sees someone in the hall. He's like, oh, hey, how you doing? Like, yeah. just, you know, like that lady that yeah. every building has. She's our, our that. I think her name's like Kathy or something. I don't know. But she's, she's an interesting one. <laughs> Turns out she's a janitor. She's a, of the building? A, 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 no, she's like a school janitor. Okay. I work for a catering company too. And I was doing like the school, like one of those district, like everybody who's been here 50 years banquet dinners. And she was there. I was like, oh, that explains it. But she's not a teacher. There's no way she's a teacher. But dude, I've been blabbing like an idiot. No, a few <laughs> minutes. Now. I get, I downed a coffee before I came here. I was a little sleepy, so I'm like, yeah, buzzing pretty good now. But what about you, dude? I don't know very much about you, actually. Like, I'm a big Devin fan, so I started mm-hmm. to see some of your work. That's around how you got a hold stuff. of me, right? Yeah. Like I, well, there was like I'm 22 now. When I was like 16, 17, the Dev scene and crew. That's right when like the DTP started. I think like 08, 09 or something. Mm-hmm. Yes. It's like right when like Addicted came out. I think it was right. It was the first yeah. album I heard of him, and I kind of went nuts over that. But like, I think it, that's where the project started. Yeah, that, that yeah. was like the first record with like Beeve on bass, and like the current band yeah. was kind of formed. And then Mark played guitar on it too. But yeah, 
but li- literally, yes. like, the album credits of that, like, dude, they were, like, the Led Zeppelin for me. Like, that was my music. All oh, yeah. oh, dude, that was it for me. Like, I was always into, like, metal and, all like, Metallica, Lamb of God, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. But when I found this stuff, I was like, oh, it's, I also always liked, like, Enya and, like, lighter stuff, too. So all of a sudden, it was, like, heavy, melodic stuff. Yeah. I just fell in love with it, right? So it's like as a sixteen-year-old kid, I was like every name on the back of that album. I was like Facebooking, trying to add. Like, oh, like talk, the, all the things. Oh, yous and yeah, stuff. like well, not like the thing, but like if you played an instrument on there, I knew. Oh, okay. Like he did the. I don't know if you saw. Like I don't know how involved you are with that whole scene, but he did like the Buy a Thread shows out in London. Yeah. It was like four albums, four nights. I went to all of those. Oh, really? And like <laughs> I, I knew who Mark Shimino was. No one knew. Who's Mark? He played guitar in Addicted. Apparently, okay. he's wanted. Oh, I'm gonna go full nerd. Him I might and, have met him before. Him and he lives in New York now. I actually talk with these guys fairly yes, often. Yes, okay. He does the yeah, Shelter yeah, Dogs yeah. project and stuff. Super I funny him dude. Now, he the big lip guy. He he showed up at the show. Oh wait. And then, and then I didn't. There's just some guy came into the dressing room after. And then they're like, oh yeah, that was Mark. Him like, and they were like best buds apparently. Oh, they used to live mean. together and stuff. Yeah. But he's just like a nobody, I guess. But I was like, no, no, you play guitar. That's one of my favorite songs. I'm gonna know you. So when we they had the meet and greet there, everybody's like, oh Ryan, oh Dev, obviously, or Dave. I was like, dude, you're Mark. He's like, Duh. I have you on Facebook, dude. I love your stuff. Like, I'm, I was just really into all of that. What does he do now? Uh, now, well, I think he works. I don't know what he does, like, as a main living, but I know he has his own project called, like, Shelter Dogs. It's okay. his own music. I think Dev helps him out with some of it, too. It's sweet stuff. It's kind of like bluesy rock. Okay. Cool stuff. And he's really into animals. That's his thing. So, like, on Facebook, all of his posts are awesome. Because there's just a bunch of, or some of them are terrible because it's like sick dogs. Everybody should go help this pit bull. Like, oh, yeah. it's a little sad sometimes. It's a little like Sarah McLaughlin y. But yeah. all these like awesome people. So when I went over to, to London for all those shows, I made so many friends with those guys because like that was a real eye opener. I remember after, um, I think it was after the key show, after night one, mm-hmm. uh, the one of the guitar players, oh, nobody there is Chris Johnson. Uh, he played guitar the ghost night I think okay. he, he works with like EMG a couple, a couple of artist companies uh, Chris actually knew who I was funny enough because uh, there was this EMG the company he worked for at the time the guitar pickups guys they ran this contest where it was like anybody in the world can enter put a video of yourself playing Zach Wilde songs right. they like Zach Wilde shred contest 2010 okay. I got fourth place Oh wow! I did a video and I got a bunch of stuff and I guess he was the guy that ran it all yeah so he also was playing guitar that night, so I knew who he was because like, I'm a huge fan, right? I was like, oh, and you work with EMG and stuff. And then he, him and my mom really hit it off. They were talking a bunch. And then it kind of came out that I did that thing. He's like, oh, I remember you. Like, you couldn't spell Ozzy Osbourne. I'm like, yeah, that was me. I spelled Osbourne with a Z. He's like, it's okay. You can play guitar. Osbourne. Yeah, exactly. Like, but then he ended up getting me like backstage every night. I remember after the key show, I was on the bus with everybody. Like, just, not Deb, but with like Ryan and Beeve and Dave. Yeah. And like, I don't think they even get it, but literally that was me hanging out with metallica you know that was that was the band for yeah. me so i've always i mean i'm a little more out of it now i don't think i saw it, uh, dev last time he came to vancouver but i went to see like the royal albert hall show oh yeah like the big stuff i always try to find a, a way to go to that yeah. actually both times i've been to london were for devon townsend shows oh so then you saw retinal circus i uh, no, i didn't see retinal i yeah. missed i went to buy a thread and i went to uh, the Royal Albert Ziltoid thing. Okay. I missed uh, the Roundhouse Retinal Circus thing. Yeah. For you, my buddy. Like, it's really cool when he does those things because even though they're in London and it costs like a grand to get there, everybody seems to agree that like, okay, let's go. So all of his fans from like Japan to Australia go over. there. So it's li- it's like when I went back for um, Ziltoid, it was like a family reunion of these guys I met three years ago at the yeah. Buy a Thread thing. Like, I think the one girl's friend is like dating. Um, Mike St. John, her name's Aoife, she's from over there. I think she might, she's been out here for a while. But her, Ireland? Yes, yeah, Aoife and her friend, who I think is dating Mike at the time. Yeah, they're from Ireland. Tia. Tia, that's it, yeah. From Finland. Yeah. And then Ava from Ireland. Yeah, she's from Ireland, yeah. But they were meeting up with them again, like I remember when I was there for the Buy a Thread thing, there was a day me and Jean Savoie uh-huh. and Aoife and Tia and I think Mike St. Yeah, Mike St. John there too. We were all just in London, because they were in London. So we went to, like, Abbey Road Studios just oh, to go. Wow. We did the tourist stuff together, yeah. right? But I remember I got, like, a picture. I think my mom has it now. Picture on our fridge at home, and it's us doing the Beatle walk across. <laughs> but it's, like, me, uh, Chris Johnson, and Jean Savoie. I'm like, dude, these are, like, guys in bands I love. Yeah, yeah. And uh, they all signed it, and I signed it, too, because it's the four of us, right? It's just, it was, that was a huge trip. Wow. And now going cool. back, like, I don't always, Like, when I go back to the Bulgaria show in September... 
a bunch of them are going again. Like it's yeah, it almost feels like a family vacation. Did you ever meet any of the people from Texas? Because uh, there's like a big probably. Because when we were down in Texas, there I was surprised at like there's Is it a large, big scene there. Yeah, and they just follow. Really? So they went to the Houston show, the Dallas show, the Austin show. That's it. I I and never it was realized. the same people. They went to all of them, right? Well, I and saw, they all, I saw the vlogs, you know, like the daily tour videos. Yeah. So I think I remember seeing some familiar faces. And then through that, there. I think we, they kind of like they knew each other by seeing each other at yeah. all of the Dallas shows. That's totally what happened. Or at yeah. all the Texas shows. And then just through the videos, I think they started to start Recognize talking each other and, more and, and know yeah. each other's names instead of just like, oh, you're the Starbucks guy or you're the... <laughs> yeah, the guy who draws the pictures or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Well, so there's a few like dev groups on Facebook or whatever that, like, like I said, I'm not as crazy fanboy as I used to be, but I still like, I bought Transcendence and I buy all the stuff when it comes out, I support it, right? But there's some of the guys on there are so diehard. It's awesome. Like, he's doing that Creative Academy thing right yeah. now. And I'm a part of that one, too, because okay. that's something I really want to learn about, too. But it, it's hilarious. When as I first, a musician or just... Uh, a little bit of both. Like, yeah. as a musician and as a fan. Like, I really... Like, I bought his book and everything, too, and that came out. Like, I'm... Have you read it all? Yeah. Is uh, it good? <laughs> well, <laughs> just in case he hears, like, I, I loved it. But I found, like, apparently, um, I, I heard... Is it rambly? A little bit. By yeah. the end. Like the first half of it, I was like, "Dude, this is odd." But what I've I've heard murmurs. I don't know how public this goes, but like apparently there was like there was a, like ten people that listened. Well, there was like a ghostwriter involved for a while or something. And then the, then he and then he took over because it wasn't working, yeah. right? I I think I could tell when it happens. Oh, like there's a, there's a kind of a moment where you're, it's not a moment. I thought he rewrote the whole thing. Maybe maybe he did. I don't know for sure, but like it seems like the first half of it is a narrative. It goes through here's what happened in Vi, and here's kind of how my first couple solo records went. And then it goes from like the storytelling, and then, and then I did this, and then we did this tour, and I recorded this record. To all of a sudden, like the big existential ramblings that he's kind of known for, yeah. which I dig. But I couldn't put down the first half, and I kind of struggled to make it through the last half. You know what I mean? Yeah. But that said, like it's he's not a, he's not an author. <laughs> Cutting some slack on that a little bit, and I, I loaned it to my mom, and she loved it front to back. So yeah. Maybe it's just me. I'm not a big reader. Maybe that's my thing, right? Yeah, that's all. Like, I whenever I read, it's just a biography or something like that. Yeah. Or a photo book. Which yeah, I, I do. Like. <laughs> photo books are totally my thing. Well, it's funny. I uh, one of my buddies is a guy named Omer Cordell. He used to do photos for yeah. Dev. He did like, I think he, the last one he did was Key, but he did like um, all the DTB stuff, Accelerated. Is he, he's from here. Yeah, he's from. Uh, he lives in Kits now. Okay. And I, as he actually played bass on a few of the little tracks I did, and I helped him out with an EP he did. And Ryan played drums on his record, actually, the most recent one. Okay. And so I remember when I when I first met Omar, it was just through a, another Devon fan. This guy lives in Australia. Was a huge, his name is Dave. He's a huge Devon fan. Met him when I was over in London. And then uh, I guess he met Omar through the same like crazy world of fandom, right? Mm -hmm. So then all of a sudden I get a message from this guy. Oh, can you? I hear you're a good guitar player. Come out and play guitar for me. I wasn't up to snuff because the guy is amazing. Like, yeah. I'm pretty good, but like I was... I think I was 19 at the time, which seems so long ago. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but I wasn't good enough. But he was super nice. I loaned him some gear. I learned tons from the guy. But all of a sudden, he starts showing me photos and stuff. I'm like, dude, like, he took a bunch of photos that were my screensavers. Oh, really? Like, he took a bunch of awesome strapping photos and things I see online, at, like Fear Factory and a bunch of this stuff. Yeah. He was like... Just live stuff from here? Uh, yeah, live stuff. And he I think he went on the road with Fear Factory for a while. And okay. he did a bunch of, like, in-the-studio stuff with Dev in the past. I don't know how their relationship ended or whatnot. I think he was more involved with like the strapping world. He doesn't have a. He's not. He's uh, not in it anymore. He's like in no. Like now he he sold all of his camera gear and everything. Oh okay. Like he, no, like, I was thinking. No, I think Neil is the guy I'm thinking because as you're talking, I'm like, oh, that sounds like Neil, but it's oh not, yeah. It's not Neil. No, I think yeah, he stopped working with Evan like oh seven or oh eight or so. I think they're just kind of buddies now. Yeah. But um, yeah, he's the guy's infuriating. He was an amazing photographer. Like, just out of this world stuff. Yeah. And then he was like, oh, no, I'm done. I want to be a musician. Now he's an amazing bass player. <laughs> like, the, I'm like, dude, like, leave something for the rest of us here. Like, in like a year, I think it was, he went from, you know, slapping the bass to being just this amazingly proficient musician who just blows me out of the water with his accuracy. Yeah. I'm like, oh, you bastard. He's it's just so those good. people, like, when they're really good at something, well, he, they, they get really good at, like, other things. He's super driven, yeah. too. And I think he's he's a little older than me, but he's, like, doesn't smoke, doesn't drink, doesn't... I think he's, like, a vegetarian. He's a very disciplined guy, so he just has that 
driven mindset, I yeah. guess. He's put his mind to it and, like, all the power to him, dude. He's amazing now. Yeah. But it's a little bit infuriating <laughs> just to see somebody progress that amazingly. But it's crazy. But, yeah, I was talking about But then to, sometimes those people, like, you, you hang around them enough, it's like it almost gives you energy to start doing totally things. yeah you see it and it's, it's not a jealousy thing it's like oh crap you can do it like it's possible i, yeah, I have learned tons from that guy you just hate him because you're like well, oh I, you hate yourself it's pure jealousy <laughs> it like, makes you hate yourself flat out. i've told it to him too i'm like dude i'm just jealous like you're really good yeah and that's it like i know how hard he works for it i don't think it's been handed to him but it's just like he's just jealous you're like holy crap dude you're amazing yeah but uh, yeah, when we first talked about me doing this, I shot a message. I was like, oh, dude, any chance you know Zen or anything? Because I know the whole kind of dev world sort of intermingles and crosses over here and there. Yeah. But he's like, no, no, I have no idea who that guy is. I was like, god damn. It would be so sick to have him on one of these, too, because it would be like, oh, yeah. true for me, right? Yeah, I don't. I came on um, with the Ziltoid web series. Oh, okay. That, like, ZTV. Thing. Yeah. That looked huge. Like, it was a, it was a production. Thing. <laughs> well, Violet, the girl who made some of the puppets, or yes. she made the first couple, she's a good friend of mine. Oh, yeah. Really close. Like, when I was there for um, the latest Ziltoid show, her and I and a bunch of friends went up for dinner and stuff. Like, Violet's um, I She gave me one of those, like, have you seen the Devin O-Face thing she yeah, does? It's th that, like, awful picture of him where he's got, like, 20 necks. Oh, yes, yes, She yes, makes yes, statues yes. of it. No. Yeah, she does. And she's apparently <laughs> she stopped doing it because it's too much work, but I've got one. Yeah. I got one from her. It's on my desk at home. It's like, the I always thought of it as, like, the worm face. Yeah, that's it. That's You know the one where yeah. he's got, like, infinite chins. So, yeah, I've got one of those that she made me back home. It's awesome. She's amazing. I totally forgot where I was going with that now. No, oh, she, yeah, but she was doing some stuff with the DCB thing. So that, that's yeah, I so I think that's how I got connected was because she did the original, like the demos of it. Yeah. And then I think it was something was something issue with the puppet. Yeah, it, it, was too it didn't heavy. work in a certain way. I remember talking to her about it, yeah. Yeah, so it's, then um, like, around that time... My buddy Chris, who's like an effects artist for like movies and stuff. I've I've seen some. Of them. I've followed, I, like I said, I research everybody who he pops up because oh yeah, he works with a bunch of really awesome creative people. Yeah. So when I see him with a new photographer, I'm like, oh, let's check it out, and then it's like really good stuff. Yeah. So I, I think I follow is Chris Dewitt. Uh, Devitt. Devitt, yeah, yeah, yeah. I follow him on Instagram now too, and yeah, he does cool stuff. Yeah. He just won an Emmy like last. No year. way. For what? For, like, for... I can't remember some kids show. Really? Scary. It's some book. What's the books? The scary books that the kids read. Oh, dude, I uh, R.L. Steen. Oh, is it uh, Goosebumps? No. Oh, was it Goosebumps? Maybe. Because that, that's, that's I, I don't know. R.L. He got in. He got in. Well, they did a movie with Emmy that. For, he got an Emmy for like, for, like uh, FX, and he was like team leader or something on it or something. Yeah. So he he got a trophy. That's epic, um, dude. Anyway, but like there was that thing with Violet. So then Devin, or no, he, Chris made a coffee cup. Uh, with a little alien in it. Oh, okay. I think I've, I've got like that bonus DVD or whatever. So oh, yeah. I've got all those. I've seen them a million times, man. Yeah. And then... Um, that just kind of started he, there. Because he knew somebody who knew Devin. So he's like, here's this coffee cup. Do you want to give it to him? Makes sense. And then through that, Devin was like, hey, uh, do you want to do a puppet? And then they started working together for like a year or something. And then... It came time to shoot something, so I had just moved here. Yeah. Oh, from Saskatchewan? Yeah. So then uh, I remember I was like, uh, I was, it was my third day with like CBC Vancouver. Yeah. And I was filming something in Whistler. I think, I can't remember what it was. But we're driving back from Whistler, and then uh, my buddy Chris, or, yeah, he phones and. As soon as he phoned, I'm like, oh, I bet you I know Sounds what he's going to say. <laughs> and he's like, so uh, do you want to film something with Devin? And I was like, I knew you were going to say that. As soon as I saw I was you on the phone. <laughs> really? And I'm on the highway where I'm just like, screwed up no, answering it. Happening. As soon as I saw It's him, worth it. Yeah. This one's worth the ticket. Yeah. And then, because uh, I just knew that they were doing stuff through like Facebook. Gotcha. Were you a fan of Devin before all that? Yeah. Like, like when I was like 19. I think oh, it was gotcha. my first metal show ever. Oh, was it like strapping? Or? It was strapping, opening for the smalls. So jealous I never got to experience the strapping And I was really style. hammered. Because <laughs> it was like, uh, I think I'd been 19 for a month. So like so going to a still... bar and drinking legally was like sweet. And Gonna seeing happen. a metal band. Yeah, this is a I think I saw on my actual 19th birthday, I saw SNFU. Oh, sick. At, uh, but that was an all-ages show. And I showed up hammered. <laughs> Because you could. Because we were like, oh, it's all ages, so I can't drink, but I'm 19 now. So, so I can't. I'm going to go get drunk at this place down the road and then show up. And stumble my way over. 
<laughs> and I make an ass of myself in front of kids. Oh yeah. But then at the strapping show, I made the ass of myself, and I was like front and center in front of Devin. Yeah. What year and was just that? Headbang. Um. Or what tour was it? I should say. City, city had just city. Oh, really? This is like yeah. ninety-seven, ninety-eight ish. Yeah. When did I? No, it had been ninety-nine. I think. Oh, okay, but so this is like early strapping. Like this is when they were like right off the city. I guess this shit. Yeah, city had. I don't know a physicist. Physicist, but I think he was writing it or something. Well, yeah, well, they, yeah, they, yeah, they did. Um, well, they didn't do physicists, but they did physicists, right? Because that's that whole like it's not strapping, but it's all the same guys. So yeah, that sounds about right then. What was the sec- yeah? Because it was way before. Uh, yeah, well, strapping went heavy as city, and then the self-titled record. The self-title came way after. Yeah, it came out in like oh three or something. Like they, yeah. they went on hiatus, but he did physicists and strapping still. So- Played some shows, I guess, here or there. Yeah. I don't know, but I think it was like, because uh, they were still, uh, I think, because Detox was being played on Much Music. Oh, really? So, and so that's where, that's that where I heard of them. Yeah. And then I remember um, I was showing my friends this band because we were big Fear Factory fans. Yeah, sure. And I was like, no, 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 this band's better. <laughs> you gotta check them out. You yeah. gotta check out this band. And then I found this another group of friends who was like, they're like, are you going to strapping? Going to strapping? I'm like, yeah, you guys know who's strapping. Really? Is. They're all because I thought I just discovered this, this unknown, yeah, unknown thing that I that I was going to deliver pioneer. this to people in Regina. <laughs> yeah, and then uh, there was already a cult of it. It was already like a bunch of people that, and it, I think a big thing was Gene because Gene Oglin well, was in, in the He's in like band. every band. Yeah, That's so every a lot of people went to that show because they wanted to see the drummer from Death. Oh, from Death Clock? Like, oh, no, oh, no Death. Death at the time, and not Death Clock. Yeah, yeah. like, uh, you know. He's in so many bands now. Yeah, but yeah he's I think, in Testament now. I just, when, I, when, I was, when I was younger, I think I was probably like 13 or something, I saw Judas Priest, because they toured, and like I was going to go see, I wasn't even a big fan, but like, you go see Judas Priest if Judas Priest comes to town, right? Yeah. And they are like, oh, our drummer couldn't make it tonight, and Gene Hoagland was playing drums for him that oh, night, yeah. and I was like, you're the guy from Strapping. <laughs> like, what the hell? Yeah. Like, the dude, he's a machine. He did, I remember there was a... Uh, I don't know if you remember Sounds of the Underground. It was like this big. Uh, they did a all tour day, of that, didn't they? I think I've, I've seen a video of they did thing it. where it's like in arenas. Yeah, Strapping did a video of Love from a, from a Sounds of the Underground thing. So I've seen oh, it on really? YouTube a million times, but obviously it never went. Oh wow, I never seen that one. But there was one year where um, uh, the drummer for Opeth couldn't make it, or yeah. he had an anxiety attack before he came over. And so it's Gene Holman, probably. So they were like, uh, let's, Gene, can you learn these songs in like two days? And, and he's he like, just, all right. And yeah. he did it. And my buddy saw it. He was like, it was so good. You wouldn't have known, yeah. But it's like, you know when it's Gene because he's got that sort of flowing style. So smooth. That's th- that's what I you listen so to. So like, it was like, it sounded like Gene Hoagland playing for Opeth. Which that would was, be cool, So actually. it wasn't, didn't sound like Opeth. Yeah, they would have it, that it different Opeth, vibe but it, to it. It had a yeah. different little. Spine to it, really. Like, it's all built on that. Yeah. yeah, so like when you listen to, he just came, Gene just came with a new DVD, like the Atomic Clock, his drum video. He did like a part two of it. Yeah. And in it, he always, like in the first one, he did a couple of strapping playthroughs because that's some of his most intricate drumming. On the newest one, he did, um, I think he did Skeksis. Off, it was, yeah, it, was, it wasn't just one, it was Skeksis. And dude, watching that guy play is just another level of human. And he, the thing that it, he's just like, just chilling. When he does it, he's just like he's looking at his phone or whatever. He's looking at his little clock beside him. He just makes it. But he's look going easy. a billion miles an hour. It's, I, it's, he's like so zen about it. It's, again, it's infuriating. Yeah. It's like how can you pull that off, dude? He's like literally the human drum machine. That you can just tell him no to do it twenty BPM faster. He'd be like, okay, and he just does it. Like the guy's amazing. Man. Yeah, there was a, there was a show in Regina. I think uh, it was the well, what came after the self titled? After the self titled was Alien. And then after that, it was the New Black. Mm, now, now we're talking it like might have been. We're talking like oh six was New Black. Oh, I remember what tour it was. It was that all in the family tour. It was Zimmer's Hall. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the Devon Townsend the, band. The band. Yeah. And then Strapping. Gotcha. And uh, they got booked in Regina, and Zimmer's Hall played. It was fine. Devon gets up with the solo thing, and he yeah. gets like a couple seconds into. I can't remember what it was. Might have been Deadhead. One of the DTV tunes. Yeah, yeah. I think because oh, no, Accelerated Evolution just came out. Yeah, That's well, right. that was the first record DTV. Yeah. Yeah. So they kick into it, and the, the power shuts off, 
and uh, they blew like the circuit board or something. Yeah. So then they fix it and gets back up. But like, okay, let's try it again. And blows it, and they're like, ah, oh, we can't do anything about this because there's no power. Jeez. It was a, it was an older venue, and just something was after that show they got upgrades. Oh really? Like they upgraded the whole. So it, just, it wasn't ready for a show. Just, really no, it time. wasn't ready for. Whatever Interesting that, that Zimmers could do it and then have, like, yeah. more tech or whatever, yeah. more lights. So the people were like pissed off and Fair. they wanted their money back and all this. So then the lights come up and people start chanting for Gene. <laughs> and he's like, like, do a drum solo or and something. Then, yeah, and then like you don't need mics they're for backstage drum, yeah. and they're like, Gene, why don't you just go up and do Play something? Drums. He's like, all right. Because he never does drum solos no, or yeah. anything. So he just goes up and acoustically played. A Couple. drum solo for like five minutes, and everyone was like, "Holy fuck!" Worth and it. even like all the band members came out to watch this thing. Well, yeah, they were like, "He never does this." Well, I, I feel like that has like if to see him finally go like unchained, sort because of, I know he wears like ankle weights when he plays, and like it feels like he's always holding back. So if, if you convince him to like go nuts, like like that must be yeah. a whole another level of music. Like I remember what apparently because like, I think I talked to him about it at one point later and. And he said that he just kind of did... Played a song or something? No, he, I think he just kind of went through warm-up drills. <laughs> just, just, like, doing paradiddles and stuff? Yeah, uh, whatever. And then there was, like... I remember there was footage of it, too. So oh, really? I Probably think it's some... at a TV station, because there was, like, a TV crew there. Oh, really? As well, yeah. Cool. That'd be some killer footage to get a hold of. But it's just acoustic. It's just hammering yeah, on drums, so it sounds like garbage, but it's, like, like it's not... Still epic, I think. or nothing. Well, you filmed a bunch of the Making a Transcendence, right? You did all those, yeah. that web series, right? For the, like, I, remember, I watched it all as it was coming out. It was awesomely done, by the way. But the the last one, they, I think it was, because he kind of did like a guy, an episode, right? Yeah. And I think the last one was Dev, and it was like the vocal recording of it. Yeah. Did you, what was that? Because I noticed there was, that was one that had the least footage of that. Of did, the vocal recording? Yeah, yeah. I think there was like a couple seconds. Did you, were you not actually there for that? Or so, did, like, <laughs> I gotta um, know. No, so okay, so the the magic of that part is I didn't actually film the real recording of the vocals because when he does it, he does it at his place in Gibson's. That's what I thought. Yeah. And just like a shitty little box and just into yeah. a, sits on a laptop or whatever. On an SM7B and, then, and sings into it. Yeah. And then sings, records, sings and like that. Um, gotcha. so just, and for whatever, like I can't remember. I think it was just schedules or whatever we couldn't make well, it happen. Well and that'd be kind of weird too just so sit there we, and watch him in his, in his room. For like half a day we went back into the armory and just set something up. I knew it. I knew it when I was watching because I was like <laughs> There was people in the comments and they picked it out right away. Yeah I was like, like that's hey, not how, that's he, does not how it, he does it. Right? I Maybe knew that it. was you in the YouTube comments. It could have been dude. I have no idea. Because like yeah, I, a couple years ago when he did like addiction and everything he, he's always really open about his process which is what I really dig about it. I think yeah. It's another thing that kind of made me go that way because it's kind of like I don't want to be Devin and write Devin music, but his process works really well for him. So if I can learn something from it, like I'm totally gonna try, right? Yeah. Hence why I'm in the, the creative academy and all that stuff. Right? I'm a singer, songwriter, metal dude who programs his own drums. Like probably gonna learn something from a guy who does the same yeah. thing, right? But in my head, I was like, that just doesn't seem like the way you do it. Like go back and retrack all the vocals when he knows how to do it himself at home. Like whatever. Yeah. I thought maybe it was just something new he tried for the new record or something. But, oh, okay, that makes sense now. Yeah, totally it was just for, it was just, just well, for it was the camera. Great looking shot you had on there too. But it was like in the massive live room and everything. Like this doesn't seem cost effective. Okay, now yeah. it all adds up. Well, we just had it for like half a day, and there was nobody in there. And so amazing. So like yeah, just come in, set up a microphone, whatever. We'll yeah, just pretend. Make it look like he's. Doing, I think I think he's saying like truth or something. Yeah, I remember seeing that clip. It looked, it looked awesome. Like the lighting, the armory looks awesome. Yeah, it's a great. Place. Like I don't know why more bands don't do more film. I think. A couple of radio stations rent that out and film in there. I think I've seen. Oh, really? Yeah, I think it was like this is like Jack FM or something. They had like sh- uh, Shine Down or something. Did an acoustic performance in there. Yeah. And yeah, it sounds great, obviously, because it's the Armory. Yeah. But it looks amazing. I mean, people forget about that it's yeah. massive white A room. Like, have you been in uh, the warehouse? Uh, which in one? Gastown. That's Brian Adams. No, I haven't. The only local studio, actually, another fun. I feel like. My world's always very close to the Devon world. Yeah. Like, by chance, even sometimes. Like, uh, my old guitar teacher was a guy named DJ Temple out in Abbotsford. Amazing player. Like, he was the best teacher I ever had, right? And he had a super brutal band called Without Mercy. He was, like, super local death metal stuff. Okay. 
and they recorded a record at the factory out here, right? And I was probably 13 at the time or so. They were the best band in the world because they were like my buddies, right? Yeah. So I got to go into the studio, not with them, but we, I went in with the guitar player to go pick up the final like version of like the master CD and go listen to it there, and I was all stoked, right? Awesome time, only time I've ever been in a pro studio. But the day before, Dev recorded Key in there. Oh, wow. But I had no idea at the time. That was before, because like, that guitar teacher of mine, DJ, showed me, he gave me like this mixed CD one time, because I was really into like Motley Crue and Poison and like hair metal, and he's yeah. like, no, nah, dude, check this stuff out. And it, it was like my doorway to Lamb of God and Pantera and all this stuff. But I think it was like track six or something was Love by okay. Strapping. And I was like, this is amazing. And that was in like the LimeWire days. So I tried to find more strapping stuff to download. And all I ever found was like Satan's Ice Cream Truck. Oh, yeah. Of the first record. And I was like, what the fuck? What happened? Like, this is not the same band. Yeah. So then I just was like, okay, I love Love. But beyond that, I never, maybe it's not my thing. And I found the video online for it. But I never like tried to find anything. Like, I didn't know City existed or yeah. any of the rest of it. And then that same guitar teacher showed me uh, Super Crush mm -hmm. when Addicted like leaked. And I was like, same dude? What? Yeah. And then from there, I just downloaded every record and every bonus thing I could find and like just went all in. And now I have like the leaked versions and the real versions and the commentaries. <laughs> oh, dude, like my Townsend playlist is like fucking 80 albums deep and all this stuff. I got everything because I just dig it, right? Yeah. I, I love like, I love to listen to his demos and stuff and re like I'm, I'm slowly piecing together how he's doing stuff. And it's just, it's almost like I'm studying this dude. Kind of. Like, I feel like it sounds really creepy. Mm -hmm. But I'm just trying to learn how he does it, because he does amazing work. And things like the first Ziltoid record, when he did it all in a bedroom, like, I'm in a bedroom. <laughs> I'm doing the same. I got a yeah. pod into a, a MacBook Pro right now. It's, why can't I pull that off? Okay, it's just learning and time and techniques, right? Yeah, so, and just playing around. Putting and... in the hours, really. That's the thing I'm at now, is just trying to find the time to make it all happen. Yeah. Because so all of a sudden, I got this, like, grown-up job. She's still weird to me. Like, I'm, but you still get to play around. Like, at, I think at the at work, dealership. At, that's right? the thing. Yeah, like the, even the dealership. I work. I work at Volkswagen, right? I Abbotsford, Chillac, and Maple Ridge. I'll so, what is the, like? What do you actually? Well, what do it, you? Take I got I got place? hired to do used car ads. Okay. Every used car that comes on the most dealerships have like a kid that comes in twice a week. Since I have three dealerships, I am that kid that goes in twice a week. But I'm there five days a week just because yeah. of how it works out, right? And the thing is, when we get a new car in on trade, I take photos, I write a little bit about it, and I do a walk around video, and it goes online, it goes on Craigslist, it goes on Kijiji, you know? It's the advertising thing of it, right? And they had a guy on there before me, and then all of a sudden it got busy. They wanted to do these videos, and the workload got bigger, so they went, okay, crap, we need, like, you need an understudy or someone to kind of take the workload off of you. So the guy before me was an amazing photographer. Mm -hmm. Like, he's one of the best automotive guys out here. His name's Dylan Akimenko, like, I learned so much from that guy, mm -hmm. but it just—he was not digging it. Just like, I don't know if it's like working at the dealership life or whatever. It's a different kind of world there, where the sales guys make a shit ton of money and act like they're tough shit. And right? probably like when you get to a certain, like your skill gets True, to a certain level. He was way too good to do it. Almost, like almost I gotta... thing. Yeah, because it's literally. I mean, a lot of it's you do the same twenty-one shots. It's yeah. like, and you shoot this corner at thirty-five mil and the front at fifty mil, and like it, it's kind of kind of just going about a process. I could see it wearing you. And I think it just did. He wasn't into it. So he left. And then we brought on... I've, we, I've gone through a few assistants, actually, previously. My new one starts Monday, and I'm hoping she'll work out. But since then, all of a sudden, the job's expanded. So now, basically, I do all the used car photo ads and everything. Mm -hmm. But as soon as I'm done that, which I'm usually done by lunch or something, I got the rest of the day to do. And now I've started doing, like, Facebook ad campaigns and all this other stuff. And then just for that, we'll do, you know, a lead submission form where it's just, you know, buy a new Jetta for 88 bucks bi-weekly, whatever, here you are. You yeah. need a, a photo to go with the ad. So then I just kind of get keys to the kingdom. And they're like, go shoot a picture. And then I just like, dude, I've learned so much of this job. Yeah. It's awesome. Like, when the, the other day I was just bored because I had run out of things to do. And I, I don't like being, like, I don't like, like the whole time theft thing at work. I can't sit there on Facebook. Like, I yeah. got to be doing something, even if it's not... Like sometimes I'm just making dumb photoshops of the managers, right? But at least uh, I'm, I'm involved You're with it. It's, yeah. it's, and they look at it the same way. Like as long as, you know, everything gets done and you're trying, you're doing the best you can, like, awesome. Yeah. So like the other day, uh, let me find it here. I got the photo somewhere. Uh, the Maple Ridge dealership, even though we're a Volkswagen lot, we had a bunch of Tacomas. Okay. It's a bunch of Toyota Tacomas. Because I guess they sell really well. We got them at auction for a great deal. We yeah. ended up like three Toyota Tacomas. Do you guys ever get Trailblazers? Occasionally. Yeah. 
Okay, we, usually everything we deal with is like 08 or newer. Kind of it's a rule good. of thumb. Mine's you getting like up a, to like 300,000 almost. It's creeping well, up there. If so. my coworkers hear this, then you're about to get some phone calls. Why? Oh, because they're just going to like try to sell you cars, man. So car salesmen do. That's, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> so yeah, I was at Naples Ridge and like, hey, shoot a photo for the Tacomas. And I was like, okay, like how many people can I have? He's like, dude, just like we're slow today. Keys yeah. to the kingdom. Do what you want. So I grabbed four drivers and shot a massive roller of three Tacomas at once crossing That's the insane. bridge. I was so stoked on it. And I'm like standing at the uh, sunroof of a Jetta. It was my coworker's jet, and I got like a sales guy in there and a lock guy and a parts guy. Is that the... That's just over the Golden Ears. Oh, okay, We yeah. didn't want to actually cross a bridge, because all of a sudden that's like four tolls all at once. So right after the Golden Ears on the Maple Ridge side, there's a quick little on-ramp, mm -hmm. and then a quick little off-ramp. Right. So we parked four car, or like three trucks in a car in the row, waited for a gap, took up all three lanes, and then went right back off, just yeah. like on, off, super fast. And then a bunch of cops right there. That's too. on your Instagram. Am I in, on? Am I, uh, I, I got on two. There? You probably follow my personal one, but I got a, a photography one too, where I do like R-rated photography. Rated R. Rated R. Well, I started. I used to do uh, photos. Well, that's kind of like I had this idea, and it's it was rate B. Yeah. Rate B. Rate B. Rate B. <laughs> that's actually kind of cool. B-rate studio. I well, no, I think we were just. What the hell were we shooting? We were shooting something in Washington, which is like irrelevant to the story, but we were in a hotel room and like, oh, it was a, we were really high because we were <laughs> shooting like legal weed. It was like a demo for oh, gotcha. a reality show based on like the, whole, the operations the legality of, of it now, yeah. just the operations of a pot shop, a legal oh, really? pot shop. And they got us baked and then we just thought of these like crazy Names ideas. Names for things. <laughs> and, it's just too funny. One of my and it was like rate B and it's like, well, what's the point? What, I don't get it. And it's like, well, how can you be offensive and, like, throw offense in people's faces and be like, oh, what company you work for? Rapey. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, what? Who'd you, who'd you, who'd you work for? Oh, Rapey. Rapey. No, 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 no. no. Rapey. Rape no, rape and then I drew up a whole logo and everything, <laughs> Rapey Productions. Did you use it in, like, the rated R kind of yeah. thing, like the movie? Rape That's what B. I did for my watermark, too. Yeah. My watermark's awesome, like... No one notices that because I'm all like attention oriented, right? But it's literally the rated R from a movie kind of thing. Right? It's the same R and everything. That's what and I did. It says rated B. R, and then the bottom says photography. But in the corner, I put a little camera, but I put a little red ring because like I try to use L glass as much as I can. Oh yeah. So these are the little things that I've gone nuts with the detail. I don't think anyone's ever seen the little little red ring, but it's there. And like I think so. Now that you said it, it's like someone's oh, yeah, gonna know. It's, I, like it's I on. Know. I've got a black version of the camera and a white because like you never know what'll show up better. They both have the red ring though, yeah. so if whatever works, I've got. Yeah. Have you played with the Sony's yet? I I played with them in a camera store once, yeah. like two seconds, no card in it, kind of thing. I think I was actually shopping for a seventy to two hundred two eight, but I was like, oh, like there's an A seven S. Let me check it out. It was cool. It was weird. Like yeah. I've only ever used Canon cameras. So even like shooting with a exactly similar Nikon feels weird because like the buttons are a little bit different. It's backwards. And the lens even twists off backwards. Your, fo your focus is the opposite. Yeah, exactly. Way. So like I think that's why you them. I could be wrong, but that I think that's why you don't see them used in uh, filming very much. It's just photography. Really. For Nikon's, because it's like I don't know any other lenses that that go that way. That yeah, because it's focus in the back right and zoom in the front is that it or is it just literally you turn it the, the, the it's the opposite oh really so you're always turning like right to go you tighter. go clockwise uh your focus is your throwing your focus is clockwise on a cannon oh yeah see i don't even think about that but i guess it's the thing you and get so used to and it and then you focus towards you and that's uh counterclockwise is the zoom I ring think, still the same, or is the zoom backwards too? I don't remember. I just remember like hating the focus and, and just like, being like everything's off. I'm like, time. I don't care how good this Nikon camera is. I just it's can't. like you've made the focus this way, and I'm like, I can't. I feel like at some level they do things just to be different. Like, yeah, I don't know if it's maybe, maybe. it's Canon's wrong. Maybe Nikon did it first, and so we're Canon all living did backwards. It every, like everybody else. Exactly. Like I don't. Fujinon yeah, I don't know who's everywhere. the weird one. Who's the redheaded stepchild? But anytime, like, I've, like the Nikon lens mount turns the other way. Yeah. Like, little things. I'm like, why did you have to do that? I think the one I played with, too, usually my shutter speed's up top, my aperture's down on my thumb. They flipped it. And I was like, now... Oh, yeah. It just messed... Because you're so, like... When you get professional with a piece of gear, you stop thinking about it, right? You just know what you're doing. It's muscle memory. 
So as soon as you throw a wrench in the works, like, yeah. I'm just lost, dude. So, I, like, I tried the Sony, and it seemed really cool, and it was super sharp and everything. But, I don't know, this part, like, the... Uh, the electronic viewfinder, I wasn't a huge fan of the either. The mirrorless? Yeah, like it had a bit of lag in it, which I guess they're getting... I think Sony just announced a new one. The, the, the A9. A9. It's like 4500 bucks. The... Oh, and, yeah? Yeah, and it's in, like, yeah, the specs are nuts. It's got like it's a couple hundred autofocus points that basically cover the yeah. whole screen and a joystick and a touch The screen. ISO is insane. Yeah, too. like it, apparently it's like the best camera. Yeah. But I, I don't know. Like I, The thing I hate about them is the body. It's... The buttons everywhere, so to hold it's not as robust as a Canon. Yeah, it's, it's like I used to use like a T4i for the longest time, yeah. and now I still use that at work sometimes. And a lot of my coworkers use those because they're smaller and lighter. I don't know if I'm just like a glutton for punishment, but I like the the heavy 5D. Like I shoot with a battery grip, and like ever like I, there's something sturdy about that. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's why I like. Well, you could put it in a cage, the Sony in a cage, but then or, it's like. Really? Have you ever seen those? No, I haven't. Is it like yeah, a it's waterproof just, dealio and everything? No, or? it's just a, a square thing it'd be like a cheese plate so four cheese plates yeah like that and you can put all your accessories around it and the camera just sits in the middle and usually there's a handle at the top oh oh i may have seen those maybe being used on youtube or something yeah then. okay and then you can add like rails onto it so you can put whatever you want to do or like a focus ring or whatever yeah. That's but cool, uh, it's just I don't know. If I would get a Sony, I would get one of the smaller ones. I think that's the point of it, almost. like Instead of getting, like, I would go even smaller and go, go to... Go, like, micro four-thirds or something? Like, full-on trinket? I can't remember what it's called. Um, it's got a... No, it doesn't have a fixed lens. I don't know, but it, you, you could put it in your pocket. Gotcha. Well, do you, uh, do, you have, do you have all, like, Fuji stuff, like, Fujifilm stuff? They uh, came out with this, like, X-T2 thing that I've never gotten my hands on yet. Even Every time I try to go to London Drugs or my camera go-tos, they're sold out. Like Apparently they order them in and they're just gone like that. Okay. They're this sweet little thing. It's like, a sm- it almost looks like a film camera. Like it's got dials, an aperture dial on the on the on the actual. Oh, lens. they look like the hipster cameras. Kind of, like but it's like your ISO is a manual dial. Your shutter speed's a dial. Everything is like there. There's a touchscreen. You can do all that too. Yeah. But it's all like so vintage e, but it's mirrorless and it's all epic. I want one. I don't know why I want one, but I want one. Maybe yeah. it's just a good marketing or something. But they're super cool, and like that's what I would go to. Is it's super small. If, yeah, I'd, I'd throw on like a, it's a crop sensor, so I'd probably buy a twenty or a thirty-four mil or something lens for it, and then that would be it. I would just mm. shoot with a little prime and call it a day. And then there's my actual life, which is this five D and a massive camera bag where I just anytime I see a piece of glass, I'm like, yay! <laughs> <laughs> just try to put. It, I'll use it for something, right? Yeah. That's a nice thing. My work actually. Everyone like I, I don't like asking for stuff and be like if I want to buy a lens usually it's for personal reasons so I just suck it up and save up and I buy the lens right mm. but occasionally they're like dude you should have just asked like I mean if they buy it it's theirs obviously and then so, you're just renting or so there's kind of like there's that thing there's like if I lost a job I would not have any of the stuff anymore yeah but they asked me to do some drone footage because we're building a new building uh, the Abbotsford Volkswagen is getting moved to the auto mall and we got a huge project coming up they're revamping a dealership so like you should do some drone footage of it and I was like I should I don't have a drone yeah I'm like I'm gonna buy one I have one in my Amazon cart like ready to go and they're like oh is it the the Mavic Pro one I'm like yeah it's the one they're like oh we're, we're, we ordered one yesterday I'm like <laughs> Sweet, <laughs> like now I'm just stoked. Like yeah. that's why I dig the job so much, man. It feels like I'm a kid in a candy store. Like, and they seem to really, I, I maybe it's because they get away with paying me pretty little because I don't actually know what I'm doing, right? But it, it seems like we're at a pretty good crossroads with each other, where they're like, "Okay, figure it out. If you mess it up, like, fair enough. But just we could spend fifteen hundred bucks and you could learn how to fly it, or we could pay five hundred bucks a day yeah. for a drone flight, and then in three days." We should have just bought the damn thing. Versus yeah, that's I'll work, right. I'll work for them for whatever it is an hour, and then it's just they got me forever, right? So and then and also too, it's like it's not just a job to you. It's like you're it's literally putting like, initiative in, and it literally feels like kid in a candy store sometimes. Like when I do, a lot of times if I'm bored, I'll do videos with sales guys that are just dumb. Like we did one like April Fool's jokes where like Volkswagens have like inductive fueling, like you park at a gas station and it just charges by itself, right? Mm-hmm. Like dumb stuff like that. That's exactly what I would do on the weekend if I had nothing to do and was bored. Yeah. I would just film something stupid. Or, like, my YouTube show. It's the same. Like, one of the episodes of my YouTube show, we bought this terrible Honda Civic for, like, 300 bucks. And the thing with Honda Civics is how good a fuel economy they get, right? Everyone knows. Yeah. So I was like, how good is it? So I Googled, like, how far can you go on a tank? And the internet was, like, about 600K. And I was like, okay, let's go 800K. <laughs> we didn't do it. <laughs> we went to Salmon Arm and back. Okay. was the plan but how far is that uh it was 
it's about four hours from Abbotsford. So okay. it's like, it's way past Hope. Like, you yeah. know, like Hope, Kamloops, Salmon Arm. Yeah. I, I think Kamloops is like halfway. But it, it was, like, my grandpa lives up there. So I was like, okay, we'll just go to dinner. My grandpa will drive home. It'd be hilarious. Mm-hmm. We'll spend eight hours just driving. So we made it all the way there. No problem. The car leaked oil everywhere, but we put more oil in it. It's fine. <laughs> oh, dude, it was a three hundred dollar hunt. Like one door didn't open. It was missing a window full okay. of like foam. It was awesome. I missed yeah. that. Car. It was actually a year ago, almost today. Came up on my uh, my Facebook that you guys did this. Yeah, that yeah. that we bought the car. I think we did it probably in another week or so. Okay. But like it, we're hovering around the anniversary of it. But yeah, so we drove it all the way there, made it, and then we made it like halfway through the Coquihalla, and it sputtered out. And we filmed the whole thing, and it, both of our heads, like, I brought a jerry can. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, ha, 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 like, oh, shit, what are we going to do? Oh, pull out the jerry can. Like, yeah. we're good, right? I didn't fill the jerry can. <laughs> <laughs> so all of a sudden, our made-up drama turned into real drama. Yeah. So it had, like, half a liter in it or something. So we just put in what there was. I spilled half of it on the ground, opened it the breather the wrong time. Like, it was a nightmare. And then we made it. Oh, we made wow. it to, uh, to Hope. Just it was an automatic car, but we just put it in neutral and turned it off and like coasted down every bit of hill we could. Holy it was crap. my like it was supposed to be fake, but it wasn't. <clears throat> yeah. My roommate was so mad at me after it because it was clearly my fuck up that I didn't get gas. He didn't even come home that night. Yeah. We had to drop him off at his girlfriend's in Chilliwack. He would not like he wouldn't speak to me for a few days. Like he was <laughs> almost killed us. I guess we were fine. There was just no cell That's reception. Funny, or maybe you did it on purpose. Well, just to like mess with well, them. Well, like, not dude. I remember when we were packing up, we were like super late. We were supposed to leave at like 10. We left at like 1. So by the time it was time to like throw the jerry can in, I literally, we had like four or five in the garage. I grabbed the heaviest one because I was like, that'll be the one with the most gas in it, right? Yeah. It was just the biggest one. <laughs> so all the others were little and probably had gas. This one was just like 20 liters or something and pretty much empty. And then I was like, oh, we'll, we'll go fill it in my head. And then we picked up our camera girl from work and then we just didn't totally slip my mind yeah and then here we are the side of the coca at 11 o'clock at night pitch black semis are rolling by i'm like well winter uh no it was it was like this time of year okay. so it wasn't super cold or anything like it wasn't awful but there was i remember one of the lines that like he got real mad and it's all on camera it's a pretty great freak out he had but um i was like oh we'll just pull over the next like there's all these rest stops I'm like some we'll get some gas somebody's like dude there's a sign that says check your fuel because there's no gas for 40 kilometers. That's why the sign's there. Yeah. Like, no, it'll be fine. Like, we'll, we'll get gas with somebody. He's like, there's no people. I'm like, there's somebody camping there. He's like, it's the middle of winter. There's no people camping. I'm like, that's fine. We'll steal some gas. There, yeah. there, I was, he was right. There was nobody anywhere. But we did it. That's crazy. And this is all on YouTube? It's all on YouTube. Yeah, that is, the show is called Half Cut Garage. That yeah. episode is called Running on Hopes and Dreams. <laughs> and it's pretty cringy, like... Honestly, I just film stuff. A lot of it ends up being just some, like, 300% speed drive. Or, like, the yeah. first episode, we painted up this Volkswagen, like, Van Halen. Like, we did, like, the red, black, and white stripes all yeah. over it. And called it the Love Dub. It was, like, the worst vehicle ever. It was free. My buddy gave it to us because yeah. it didn't run. We just stole a bunch of parts from a junkyard and made it run, and then it ended up lighting on fire. That part didn't get filmed, like, mm. idiots, but that's how the car ended it. Full on, like... I don't know if you're too, like, mechanically savvy, but, like... When no, my brother and my dad are. Okay, like... Like, with the way that you were dealing with cars is, like, what my brother used to... How he used oh, to just play like, with the cars. Oh, just, like, buy something awful and just, like, and see then, what you can do with it? Yeah, his thing was, like, Chevette's. I remember he had oh, a Chevette with, like mags on the back it was like, oh, yeah. it was so illegal well the old american stuff was like our favorite it's just nowadays the cheapest stuff is the hundred dollar like yeah. nissan pickups right so yeah. that's what we mess with actually an upcoming episode i already bought the car it's gonna be awesome yeah everyone's i'm just like i have a goal in mind so we just try to do it so the one was i wanted to make a civic into a pickup truck so i bought a civic and we cut the roof off and made it into a pickup truck and yeah then, then we tried to take it like mudding like you do in a truck and it oh, failed so bad it just got stuck everywhere so my next goal is i want to fly I want to jump over something like dukes have had like a few feet for a few seconds like i want to be in the air so one of the lot guys at one of the dealerships has this old nissan pickup that i bought from him for 200 bucks it's still his right now but like yeah after may long weekend i think is when it's mine so we're gonna jump it over something i have no <laughs> idea what yet I, the thing barely runs but we're gonna fly in it the the best episode i have in my head though this is like the this is gonna be our grand finale i yeah. think I bought this 2000 Chevy Camaro, like big V8, and it's got nitrous. Like, it's insane. I bought, spent like three grand on it. I got it for okay. steel. Awesome car. I was like, okay, what can we do with this thing? Because it, it's not bad. I don't want to cut it apart. Like, sweet car. Yeah. So, I was like, we should do just some awful road trip challenge with each other. 
but me and him both work crazy you no know, long. I work for Volkswagen and a bunch of the dealerships, and actually that's him right now. It's kind of funny. Yeah. He always asked me if I changed the cat litter. No, I didn't. Sucks, it sucks. Did you pee the cat? No, I said, like, did you change the litter yet? I'm like, no, I, I told him I was going to do it today, but I didn't. But uh, so I bought this car. I was like, okay, here's what we're going to do. The only rules are I get off work Friday at uh, I think 4.30 or 5, and I can't be late for work Monday morning at 9 a.m. That That's it. Yeah. In that weekend, not a long weekend, a typical weekend, we are going to get in this Camaro and drive to get tacos in Tijuana <laughs> and back. Google says we can do it. Yeah. Apparently, it's like 60 hours in total of okay. a there and back. So the math adds up to we can do it and get eight hours of sleep Sunday night. Okay. So any second we're not driving, you're losing Sunday night sleep. Okay. But that said, that's doing the speed limit. You do 10 over for 3,000 miles. Yeah. You could probably knock 10 minutes off, 20 minutes, half, maybe an hour. I don't know. Sure. We'll see. I don't, like, half the people I tell it to are like, that's amazing. The other half are like, you're retarded. That'll never work. I'm like, but you're going to watch that. Yeah. Don't you want to, like, no one knows. As far as I know, no one's done that yet. Tijuana Taco Weekend. I'm not even going to tell my people. I'm not going to tell people at work either. That's going to be the thing. Because, like, they shouldn't have to know. I should be at work on time. You would leave Friday night. Yeah, like, literally, when I get off work, he's just going to pick me up and we're going to, I'm not even going to go home. Like, someone else can pee the cat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or you know, bomb down, bomb back. And then Monday morning, I'm like, hey, how's everybody's weekend? I'm like, oh, it's good. I went to Mexico. I'm like, you went to Mexico? I'm like, yeah, I drove. <laughs> and back. Like, it's going to be the worst thing ever. But I'm so excited. And then you get stopped at the border for two hours because they're like, Because they're like, what? no one would actually do. I figure if we have enough, like, Canadian flags on the cars and GoPros on it, they're going to be like, Okay, I see what you're doing here. Like, like yeah, they might trust it more. Yeah, maybe a little more legit. I don't know. Like, who are you working for? <laughs> <laughs> Literally, our land YouTube channel that's made me 17 cents. I don't yeah. know. Like, I'm so stoked on that one though. And then when we get back, that car is gonna get cut apart actually because I ended up having a plan for it. Hmm. I bought another Camaro that needs an engine. So, <laughs> so you're just buying cars for pieces. Pretty well. Like, I got this older Camaro. It's this '85 like mullet mobile. It's the ultimate like. Trailer Park Boys I Rock car. Yeah. And I bought it for 800 bucks out on the island. And the guy was like, okay, you can come and get it, but bring a trailer because it doesn't run. Like, you tr it'll fire up, but the transmission will wobble. Like, you're not going to drive this thing. Yeah. So I would grill him a little bit. I'm like, hey, what happens? Like, when you fire it up, like, if you try to put it in gear, it grinds and it's like something's gone in it. So my roommate's way more like savvy with this stuff than I am. But uh, so he's like, oh, I'm pretty sure it's just like the, the mounts. It's probably just a transmission mount. I bet we could just replace the mount and drive it home mm -hmm. I'm like well that's all i needed to hear so we bought an 80 dollars transmission mount drove a truck over and we were like okay if it really is that bad we'll get a u-haul trailer we'll rent it out there we'll trailer it up we'll bring it over well, you can drop a u-haul trailer off at a different u-haul so yeah. that's what we'll do worst case scenario we got there the thing was awesome it didn't drive obviously we're like okay give the guy the money for it we hung out with him a few minutes he gave us some beers was like hey this is an awesome dude i'm like by the way, I think we can drive this home. He's like, no, I can't. Like, Ready? So I was like, gave my roommate a couple minutes and some jack. We brought some wrenches, and he replaced the mountain. I drove the thing home <laughs> all the way from like, oh, where was I think it was Seashells. We yeah, we drove it all the way to the ferry, yeah. ferried it to North Van, drove it the whole highway back. I loved it. Walk come at the time, so like without a transmission. Out. No, it had or the we put the mount in. It wouldn't go into fourth. Oh, okay. But it did one three five just fine. So once you got it, like. It wasn't healthy by any stretch, yeah. but it did. But it did it. Sorry. So we made it. But the, the best part of the story and the, the worst part at the same time was we went there on a Sunday because that was the day we could do it, right? So we go there on Sunday and we go see the car and everything. We bring some transfer papers with us, like I'm ready to buy the thing, right? It brought exactly how much he wanted. We try to haggle him down. He didn't have any of that. Whatever, we're good. Nothing in Seashell is open on Sunday. We couldn't get a U-Haul and we couldn't get insurance. Yeah. We couldn't even legally buy the car. Like, we could transfer, you know, you can sign the papers and everything, but, like, nothing you can do. So we just drove it home. <laughs> like, yeah. Dukes of Hazard style. Like, no plate, no permit, no nothing. Oh, wow. From North Van all the way to Abbotsford. I'm like, well, like, what else can I do? I can't buy a trailer. I can't. I was like, here we go. Got it home. Thank God. Everything was like, he could have stolen the car and sold us this thing. It couldn't even been his car. Yeah. For all I know, he's selling his like stepdad's Camaro to me for pennies just to like piss off a stepdad. I don't know. But it ended up being legit. My friend was an insurance agent, so I was calling her the whole time like, hey, am I good? Like, she's like, well, really? You don't know, but sounds like it. Like, if this all adds up, if you trust the guy, like, you're solid. I'm like, 
okay, here we go. <laughs> so we did it. And it yeah. was, I still, the car is currently sitting in a field because after that, I blew up the engine being an idiot. So now it needs an engine. So hence, yeah. hence the whole second Camaro just for the engine to put in the other Camaro. But then it'll, I'll have one sweet mullet mobile Camaro. <laughs> so I'm so stoked. I'm going to make it a whole like track car as a plan. Yeah. It's going to be a sweet drift car. I don't know if you're into like that kind of stuff. No, my brother, is, he used to compete in drifting. Oh, really? No and way. He did the tour for a season. Just, yeah. No way. Dude, I think that's he got epic. like, he was just, like top, one of the top rookies, I think, that year. He's so. like the Formula D he goes, or whatever stuff? Yeah, he goes, I think he just got back from Vegas. He went down. <laughs> Shit. With uh, his car, do you know what he drives? Uh, Top of your head, Skyline. Oh, sweet! I had one of those for a while. Mm-hmm. I used to love that Japanese man. He's got stuff. two of them, I think. Really? That, he's on Saskatchewan. Or? Yeah. Oh, too funny. They have a whole association now. Like they're, they're starting up. And really? There's like a tr- uh, stock Ooh, car track out there, and and this could be the smallest world ever. Does he? Your brother have a girlfriend that's into this kind of stuff too? Maybe. <laughs> you, would you know her name? Because there's no. a friend of mine lives out there and he's all into drifting and stuff, owns a Skyline. I think her boyfriend does it too. It would be the funniest thing in the world. Is that with an L? No, I think her name's Shelby. I'm going to find a picture. I'm going to find see if I can find Because if that's the, the way it is. It could be a friend. I don't even know. That would know be the if funniest thing in girlfriend. the world, dude. I think, I'm pretty sure she's out in Saskatchewan. Yeah, she was in Vegas. It's like, okay, scroll through and see if any of that catches your eye or, like, if you see your brother's car Shelby Craxton. I know she's all into that kind of stuff. That would literally be the funniest thing in the world. Well, if she's out there, she knows my brother. And she's really into the drifting scene and everything, so it's... Oh, yeah, because they, they pretty much... My brother and... Uh, it's a small mm-hmm. community, really. Like, yeah, they pretty much run the province, I guess. No matter how before. international it is, it's a small group, really. Yeah. Oh, that'd be too funny. And she just got back from Vegas? I think she was down somewhere. I saw her. She was, like, sending pictures of her on a plane. Because there, there was, like, a bunch of them. They were But somewhere. they drove. They drove down. Oh, really? Okay, maybe it's not her then. But if she's in Saskatchewan, yeah, he knows her. That or Alberta, I can't remember. I've never actually met this show with a bunch of mutual friends and we talk car shit sometimes. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's really coming down. I think it's wind. I don't see rain, but I hear lots of rain. Yeah, it's been windy. Okay. How, long How long have we been going so far? An hour. Holy that's probably shit. pretty good. Yeah, that's probably a pretty good uh, you know, call or quits there. Sure. Do we do we do we do a wrap up? Is there no, any kind of? I just cut it and then I come on and be like, "Well, that was a thing." That was an hour of a booth, feeling like an you're hour at a white fifteen. Feeling like you're at a white spot, but you're not. You're actually I good. started going to white spot for breakfast. I saw that the other day. That you're like buck fifty a sa- or a sausage and egg or something. It was super it's cheap. It's like uh, five bucks because I go to I'll go to A and W and get um, their breakfast two is pretty eggs. good. Yeah, yeah, two eggs, two sausage links, and bacon. Uh, and it's like six bucks or something. Not bad. And is then I realized is that, that coffee that, too, or is no that, coffee. Oh, that's just, just your that. meal. Okay. No toast, no nothing. It's just like straight fats and proteins. Just the essentials. Yeah. <laughs> well, early in the day, like I try not to. I just limit carbs as possible. And then at night, I'm like, oh, I want some nachos. Yeah. <laughs> well, dude, like I eat everything. Like I can't gain weight. Like I don't know if this is part of being 22 or whatever, but like. I eat as much as I can, and I'm still like a buck twenty, oh wow, and like six feet tall. Like people think I'm dying. I, this is just <laughs> like, dude, for lunch I'll have twenty nuggets. Like dinner, I work at a catering company. I'm fed well, good food, but doesn't yeah. happen for me. So I, it's people, like a friend of mine. Like he, there was even a time where he did steroids and he like, still he, couldn't bulk he, up. He, he, he um he bulked a bit, but he just got really full and like. Really? Hard, but that was it's just cool. not in some people, I guess. Like I, I, don't, I read somewhere it's like a gene thing or yeah, something. I you think have. he had to. He wasn't eating as much. He could have probably gained a lot more weight. There's a guy at the gym that I go to, um, and he's got this small frame, and you could tell like he's, That's just how he's he on. Well, no, he's on a lot of juice, and you could tell him when he's off because there's like a big difference. It just instantly drops off. What's funny, like a bunch it's, of my, it's it's like it looks weird because. 
it's like the amount of muscle that he has is like not on right such a small frame. frame. Yeah. yeah. Well, a bunch of my buddies back in high school were like total like football player, gym rat guys, right? So there was a while where they're like, "You're coming with us. You're doing." Like, I was like, "Okay, sure. Like, I'm down. Whatever. I'm comfortable being this tiny, but whatever. I'm down, right?" So they're like, "Eat this, drink this." Like it was all like not roid stuff, but it was like every protein powder and like creatine all the and like gainers, everything, right? Junk. I gained like twenty pounds in a month. Yeah. And then I got so sick that I lost like 25 pounds in two weeks. Yeah. Like I literally, my body just shut down. So I was like, okay, clearly this is not for me. Because a lot of that stuff is just junk. Well, that's it. Like, that a lot of it's like stuff. water weight. I guess you put on, you just get bloated or something. But I, like, that was the, I could try nothing else. That was going for broke. I can't do it. Yeah. So it's not like I'm a pretty healthy dude. I just don't gain weight. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, is what it is, right? Maybe one day. Oh, that's what I'm told. It's going to catch up. Yeah, I, I believe it when people tell me that. So, just enjoy it while I can, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, you were saying you hmm? were saying earlier you were trying to pitch them something for the Bulgaria show, doing some behind the scenes stuff or something. Or? Uh, no, just a different way of doing the show. Like, oh, you want to film the actual like? Yeah. Oh, sick! Like, just to, but I don't know how to do it. I saw an, an Anthem did one there. Yeah. And it looked really I've heard a few good. bands do this. Like, this is a venue. Yeah, that's Catatonia's really good for. done it. I think Opeth has done it. But I watched the an anthem uh, at that Plovdiv. Yeah, the ancient thing. theater. Yeah. Yeah, and it just looks really good. And I gotta check that because I'm going. Like, I already bought my tickets. Like I'm going. Yeah. I gotta check that out then. So I haven't seen any of that stuff. Yeah, just watch the an anthem. It's on YouTube, I think. Oh, an anthem yeah. at the and the Plovdiv, Plovdiv ancient Div. Roman theater, whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be a sweet gig to get to shoot the whole thing. Yeah. I don't know who he has usually do it. Uh, his name's Paul Green. He did the Royal Albert. I know whoever did it. It's clearly, you can see it. I don't know if I can see it because I'm in total attention to detail. There's a difference between like the new stuff and like the Buy a Thread stuff. Like Buy a Thread was in like <coughs> 720p. Like yeah. I don't think it even came out in any and HD super format. Grainy and just, yeah. Uh, it was like thrown. Dark. It was cool. It had a vibe to it. But all of it, like, when I saw the Retinal Circus, I was like, okay, that budget went up. <laughs> like, that's a whole nother. And now the... Oh, there was a whole budget to actually even have cameras in there and film it. Really? And, and then I know, like... to, like, because it's a prestigious venue. So they're like, okay, well, you want to film this too? Okay, well, here's another extra, like... Oh, that's know, for the Royal ten, Albert Hall one there? Of thousands or I believe that. Dude, that was, that was an to, insane... Just to have cameras in there and film a DVD. It's too fun. For the Royal Albert show, I got, um... The way that happened, I ended up going there, was the most random thing ever. Two weeks before the show, like, it got announced, and I was like, oh, that'd be really cool to go. There's no way I can afford it. I'm not going, right? So then, you know, sells out right away. I didn't even try to buy tickets. I was like, it's in London, for fuck's sake, so I'm not going. And then two weeks before the show, my buddy Dave, the Australian guy, was like, oh, I got an extra ticket. And I was like, any chance you got two extra tickets? And he's like, yeah. I'm like, me and my girlfriend are going to go. I didn't even tell her. (laughs) I picked her up from work. I was like, okay, try to get these days off work. She's like, why? I'm like, just try to get these days off work, damn it. She's like, okay. So I pick her up. I'm like, we're going to go to Paris, honey. She's like, what? I'm like, yeah, yeah, we're going to go to Paris. She's like, okay. I'm like, but first we're going to go to London. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, is it for the Devon? Like, it's for the Devon show. I bought tickets. Because I bought the concert tickets for like 20 pounds. Like, he yeah. sold them for face value. Oh, yeah. But they were like nosebleeds. They were top row, back, like. So you saw like backs of heads type of no, thing? No, no. Like, I was, he was like tiny and in front of me. Like, it's a massive oh. ramp. I, I had, like, the worst seats in the house in the farthest back place. Oh, okay. Not up on the sides there. No, no. Like, I was back. I was literally probably about as far away from the show as I could have been. It was still awesome, though, obviously. Yeah. But he did the show in two halves. I don't know if you've seen it. There was, like, the Ziltoid half and the By Request half. And there's a big intermission. So between it, I was. it didn't seem sold out. So I'm up top. I'm in, you know, the Ziltoid part was awesome. And the intermission comes. Everybody goes walk around. I'm like, fuck that. I'm getting down there. So, like, there was ushers at every single row, right? And they had a big countdown going on the screen, like 15 yeah. minutes going down. So everyone's walking around like, oh, do you mind if I cut in there to see where the time's at? He's like, yeah, sure. So I duck in, look, it's like seven minutes left over there, and do the scout, and like, there's no usher over there. Back, back out. I'm like, oh, thanks, man. Me and the run over. So for the next half of the set, dude, I was right behind one of the cameras. I guess yeah. they couldn't sell the seats because it was a view-blocked thing. Sure. Did that. Best seat in the house. This is awesome. <laughs> Like not on the floor, but no, no. I was like, the fl- I was like, uh, as if be front row of not on the floor. And I was like stage corner, like literally. Whenever you see a, a stage left camera, that was my head. Like I was, I was like next to that dude. Was it? It was yeah, pretty sweet. Was that like not the ones in the pit? Because there was some. No, no, no. It was like there was. 
there were some guys from probably halfway back the arena. And they were zoomed. on sticks. Yeah, they were like zoomed yeah. in. They were like tripoded guys just following. I think mean, they were mainly following like Beave and Dev on my side or whatever. But yeah, that was my point of view for the whole show. I mean, a few little clips I spotted my head like way down oh, yeah. there. But it was like all my 20 pound tickets ended up being like amazing. Yeah. It's kind of cool. Did you actually call it quits there? Is that one still going? No, it's still going. Oh, it's still running. <laughs> what's the what's the That's record like, on one of these so far? I don't know this one. <laughs> I think I did like an hour and a half. I tend to blab a lot, dude. Sorry. Or something. Can't help. Yeah. It. No, it was cool. I was uh, I was actually there. Oh, were you actually? <laughs> yeah. No way, dude. I was backstage after that one too. Oh yeah. Yeah, Jean is a like I met Jean at the buy a thread thing over in London. You might have seen me then. Cause Probably. I like, was running around in a leotard and with the poozer on. Were you one of the poozers? <laughs> oh, dude, I almost guarantee I saw it because like. I was full. I remember there was two of us. There was two poozers yeah, backstage, doing, and everybody was like, "Yeah, I was." Afterwards, they're like, "Put the poozers back on." I'm like, oh fuck. <laughs> so the then, uh, ever. and I still had. I was still wearing my leotard. Were you actually? I probably saw you then, dude. This is funny. Me and uh, I met John in the Bright Thread show, and John's at the Llama Quaid out here. So I see anytime I'm out here, I try to swing by there and see John. He's, like, he's not annoyed by me for some reason. Like, mm. awesome dude. I get along with him really well. So when I went to London for the. Um, the Ziltoid one, I didn't know Jean was going to be there, right? And all of a sudden, he came out to play Heat Wave with the guys. I was like, no way, it's fucking Jean. Yeah. That's awesome. So as soon as they got off stage, I was like, screw it, I'm paying for the data. So I'm texting Jean. I'm like, dude, you're here. That's awesome. He's like, where are you? Where are you? I'll get you backstage. So all of a sudden, I was backstage with everybody. How he, did you get back there? Jean was just like, hey, they're with me. It was me, so my girlfriend, and my buddy. I tried to get buddy. some friends back because I had some friends that moved out to London. Yeah. And they, I got them tickets to the show, but then I was like, I'm going to get you backstage after. And it just wasn't. I and I, they, I couldn't get them. Jean They're like, no, to, like, you need, yeah. Well, at first they were like that, and I was like, oh, can Did I... Did you go back around the venue? Yeah, like, I was back door. Jean just kind of came out the exit and was like, there's three of you. I'm like, yeah, there's three of me. Sorry, it's not just me. He's like, no, you're you're fine. And then we got, dude, like, I was having beers with, uh, like, it was, that was one of the coolest... And you just said, yeah, they're with me? Yeah, he was just falling, oh, they're with me. And it was the coolest thing I ever. I did that exact same thing. You tried it? Yeah, and they Maybe were like... Jean was on stage, though. He played one song on stage, so yeah. maybe they thought he was well, like. I was on stage, but what <laughs> if I went? <laughs> on? You should have gone out in the outfit. Then they would have been like, "Yeah, let the poozer have everybody." At the end, everybody. when they did Universal Flame. Oh, like, you're on that one too. We, we ran out there and. Oh, everybody was on. Flame. We were up on the uh, high on the, rise with. Were the, you like top uh, level or the two sides? We were the top ones by the. We were, went up with um, Dominique. Oh the, yeah, the yeah. Princess. I, yeah, I remember backstage. I was hanging out with her when she was taking off her makeup. At the end of the night, it's like such a surreal thing. Yeah. But, but I walked around there, but because like some of them do remember me from the, and I still talk to like Ryan and Beeve online fairly often actually. So a little part of me was just kind of like, hey, you remember who I am? Hey, you remember who I am? And Beeve was like, yeah, you're Rick. I was like, the fuck? <laughs> I was like, if anybody did not have a good memory, I think you might be Beeve. But like, that was so cool. And then I felt bad too because like Dev was pretty like frazzled of this crazy experience he just had. So I was like, oh, I'm just like, I don't need to go bother him. Like, he'll do his thing. But Jean was like, no, 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 go say hi, go say hi, go say hi. I'm like, uh, fine. So like, I don't want to be that guy, right? So I was like, hey, like, I could The see. backstage was full of people. That well, were, yeah, that and were he was just, trying like, to, like, get away. Like, you could tell he was, like, by it. He was like, ready to, like, go away. And I was like, no, I don't want to be that. He's like, no, 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 trust me. Like, just go say a quick hi. And I was like, oh, dude, like, amazing show. That was really cool kind of thing. I was like, any chance you remember who I am? Like, no big deal if you don't. I know you meet, like, a thousand people a day. It's fine. He's like, oh, dude, thanks for, like, giving me that out. I don't think I do. I was like, oh, I met you at the Buy a Thread thing. I was there with my mom all four nights. He's like, oh, I do. No way. Because my mom and I both got the VIP for all four nights. Oh, yeah. So, like, literally, I was backstage every night after the thing. I met Rainer and Tracy and everybody. too. My mom and Tracy got along, like, two peas in a pod. It was kind of weird, actually. Yeah. So that was kind of cool, that little surreal moment of them actually, like, Acknowledging who I Did was. Did you get any weird. merch from that show? The uh, the Ziltoid one. Yeah. Yeah, I got the hat oh, with okay. the, the the fangs yeah. on it, and I got the uh, the purple shirt. I think it was the best friends, Ziltoid with a poser. Oh. I got that one, and then when I got I got the big Those DVD were, yeah. booklet too, and it had the uh, the other shirt in it, the Royal Albert Hall. Yeah. Shirt that was a cool one. I wanted that one. That one. But we we went. Um, we thought we had time because they're like go to the merch before they open yeah. doors. And, and they just like that. Didn't and they? then like we went, like uh, we thought we were two minutes early, but they had already started. You're two minutes late. And we were like, okay, and we just like there's no way. And then we just saw. Sh- we just watched as all the shirts on the back part started coming down the display ones are like that sold out that yeah. sold out it, i think i bought so my shirt at halftime yeah cuz there wasn't much by the end of it for sure 
But uh, yeah, when I got the uh, the DVD book that it had that other shirt in it, which is pretty sweet. I think my roommate, not my roommate, my buddy who came with us, he bought the was it the Captain Spectacular one. Mm-hmm. We all got we all got one shirt out of it at least. I know that, and then my DVD got me another one. Yeah, that was su- such a cool show though, dude. I remember walking into because like the guy I bought my ticket from. I bought it from him that day. Like, it was sold to me, I think, but I was picking it up when he picked up a will call kind of thing. Yeah. So I'm wandering mm-hmm. the venue trying to find him, and no one's got their cells on because no one can afford the data on the other side of the planet, right? And that was the moment where I was like, holy crap, I recognize, like, tons of these people. These are the same guys that are here. And it's, they're not locals to London. They're Cody from New York and, like, Aoife from Ireland and all yeah. these random people. Like, there was a girl from Japan that I knew. Like, Toshi? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the one girl from Japan, yeah. I guess she was here. Was she out in Vancouver? Because um, Keith had pictures of her at the sushi place. Oh, wait, I keep well. meaning to go there. I really want. I know they've got all kinds of cool merch I've seen. Yeah. Pictures of it. It's all the dev related stuff. Yeah. I and like she go. just and then she reposted like his pictures or something or he was she was tagged in it and it was yeah. like, that's Toshi. <laughs> she was here. That's too funny. And I yeah. guess she's like doesn't know English very well. No, she's person. a very timid person too. Like okay. I met her once, very briefly, and yeah, like if there used to be the whole Devon Townsend forum. That was a big thing, the heavy Debbie forum. It seems like it's just dead now. Like okay. I think the, the server shut down and everything. But there was a very probably like a, a thirty person strong group on there. That was a very tight click almost. So when they, we I remember when they announced by a thread. There was a thread on there that was like, hey, we're all going to go for dinner this night in London kind of thing. So that was such a weird, cool vibe. And I'm hoping that happens again this, uh, this September here in Plovdiv. What country is that? I can't remember. Oh, uh, Bulgaria. Bulgaria. Pretty sure it's Bulgaria. I, f- I was considering going, and then I found, like, I love London. I'll take any excuse to go to London. I mm. love it there. Apparently to fly from London to Bulgaria is like 100 bucks. Oh, wow. Yeah, like, once you're there, I mean, we take for granted how small Europe is right because like you yeah. drive an hour to get to Vancouver and that's normal they go with like eight languages yeah. in an hour but I guess yeah, it's so small that it's just so cheap so as soon as I heard that I was like okay man yeah. totally gotta do it did you guys end up going to Paris though yeah I did I did that was how I did yeah. the, the sell of that one we were going to we did the train um, to Paris cause we so ended up not we were just gonna go to it for a day to go see Godflesh that'd be cool but it, we were just like no we're not gonna pay 500 Canadian to well, take the train to go it's, it was a sick show. train though it's fast yeah and you don't and then I remember I said, Paris was a bad time actually me and my girlfriend went there for like three days and we like I went there with my girlfriend and my buddy he went to like a Manchester game or something for the three days. We went there for three days. We kind of split up and then we all jumped back up. Dude, you ever seen the movie Taken? Yeah. That almost happened. Oh, really? To my girlfriend in Paris. Yeah, she got trapped in an elevator with a dude who wouldn't let her out, like, in our hotel. Okay. It was, I went to get, like, chicken nuggets or something because I was going to try all the the exotic McDonald's. Yeah. Because there is different McDonald's in these places, so that's down, right? And, yeah, I came back with nuggets and she's crying. I'm like, what the fuck? And then she told me, I was like, holy shit. Like, it was a sketchy place. Like, London, you take it, I mean, London feels like this. Yeah. That's why I love it. It's like Vancouver, but old. Yeah. It's like the exact vibe I got, at least. Oh, okay. And places small. And angry? Yeah, kind of. <laughs> pretty much. It's, it's the same passive aggression, I yeah. think. There's a few people uh, here at CBC that are from France. Yeah. Or from Paris. And they're like, um, it's just people are just angry and yeah, that's like, why and they're just upset the at everything the place kind of smelled and like it was pretty yeah. dirty and I was like this is not the I mean yeah the Eiffel Tower is cool and everything but beyond I mean there's Paris is cool there's many things to see and do but overall like the the living experience there I would not want to do man no way yeah. London oh I moved there in a heartbeat give me a job that I could afford rent in like a car and like live comfortably there oh shit me off now mm-hmm. I love it there and I got so many friends there now too right oh yeah but like I remember when I was there, like all the, the musical stuff and everything, it's it seems like it's all the best parts of like almost like all the best parts of North America, yeah, in a city, right? And then we don't. I mean, I'm in Abbotsford. I got like one bar. Sure. And, like, everybody I went to high school with goes there, so I don't want to go there. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. that's Abbotsford Town Hall, right? Yeah. So it's I, oh I can't wait to go back there. I'm so stoked. I'm so stoked. You'll be there too, actually. That'll Hopefully. Probably, that'll probably be the way. If you go there, you'll probably fly to London too, because that's kind of the way you do it. Yeah. Save the most money, and then go to Bulgaria. But that'd be sick to film that whole show. I'm yeah. hoping to. But yeah, I don't like, want to step on anybody's toes. But I'm, Yeah, I'm if it's already been it. contracted or something, you never yeah, know. Yeah, she just usually goes with them, but it's like just to go and help out with it. That'd be it, yeah. If you were going to help out, I'd try to get a photo pass off of you, too. <laughs> like, that'd be awesome. 
I'd love to. I'm, that's what I'm going to, like, I've only been in photography for, like, a year or two. So when I went there last time, I didn't, like, I brought my, my T4i and kit lens, but my girlfriend used it. Like, I wasn't into photos, right? So this time, I'm totally bringing, like, at least, like, my 24 to 70 and a yeah. 50 mil or something. Like, I, I want to shoot stuff. Like, I'm so stoked and traveling to do photography now. Should be fun. But that said, like, I'm going to go nuts trying to pack a small bag. I know it. Yeah. That's okay. Do we have, where are we at? An hour and a half. Jesus, I want to keep asking you camera questions and shit. No, go ahead. How okay? How would you pack a, a travel bag for doing something like that? Like not not shooting the show professionally. If you were just going to Bulgaria for a concert, knowing there's going to be some cool stuff there, you want to take pictures of. What would you pack? Lens just by myself. Yeah, if you were just like let's just say let's say you're in my boat, you're going to see a show, but you know while you're there it's an ancient city and you're going to want to take some sweet pictures. And you got let's say a 5D or some full frame body. Yeah. What glass do you bring with you? I only really own three lenses. So what do you got? Because it's like I just have the 24 to 105. Killer piece of glass for sure. The you got four. IS in there too. And then... Uh, oh, is it F4 or F2.8? It's a, it's a four. Oh, okay. And I just... I don't really care. Fair, <laughs> like, fair enough. Whatever. No. But I mean, it's like... Um, I got to start investing in glass because it doesn't really depreciate. True. Yeah. Know? No, I, I bought an 85 1.8 for... 400 bucks and then a couple months later it's over 350 yeah like to a buddy I gave him a good deal but like yeah it's true it's really more of an investment really mm-hmm. if you take good care you can just offload but okay what else you got so uh, for portraits I, I like using I got a a clone a, a Canon clone lens it's like a Yukino or gotcha. something it's like, okay, right? yeah. it's like a, a 50 mil uh, 1.4 or something gotcha. like that that's a solid one yeah and uh, and then I have a crazy 8 to 15 oh the fish. big fish eye guy <laughs> oh dude it's I wanna... insane on like a, is that, is a that full the, frame that's because the L series one too right? yeah because like, and it, I don't know I think it's meant for smaller cameras because it Be- goes full bulb right yeah, you yeah. See, it sees itself you know when you got so you it's either you're either 14 mil or 15 mil Oh yeah, you have the there's, Canon makes one that's the, like the 8 to 15 or something that's, yeah, that's right? for full frame and it doesn't see itself. It literally will just go full ellipse or elliptical image. They make another one. Oh, yeah, that's what I call seeing itself. Oh, okay. Because they make another one where you start to do it and the hood blends in a bunch. That's another one. But no, there's one that's probably one. Does it have the red ring on it? The full L series lines? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, then you, and you got pull the out to, And it's just a small circle is all you see. Yeah. And it's like everything. Pretty much, yeah, those are insane. I want to, but the widest I've got right now is a 17. I have a 17 to 40. It's actually my works. Yeah. But even that, those like, are great. holy crap. It's a 17 to 40 F4. I use it for shooting, like, roller shots of cars, and you get right up close, get this huge sky blow. Like, yeah. it's insane lens. That 24 to 105, though, I was seriously looking at that. Because that's got the don't IS. Don't bother. It's got the <laughs> IS in it, though. Well, you don't like it? Uh, well, why don't you go with um, your... Like your twenty four to what's saying like I couldn't buy it now I couldn't justify it. I think over your seventy to twenty two hundred. That's what I'm saying. But the seventy to two hundred is literally a cannon. Like it's so I got the two point eight like IS Mark II like the thing is like a, I don't know if I want to carry that like that's the thing I'm at right. Oh, okay. you, I don't know if you'd bring it. Oh, okay. Oh no, I'm oh sorry, I'm still talking travel bag. Oh, okay. Okay, no, I'm definitely I have that. I love that lens. Yeah. It's currently like my favorite. It's my newest toy, right? But yeah, I think tra- like the twenty four to one hundred five. I like that. If I hadn't bought my 24 to 70 2.8, that was the one because it's got the IS in it. Yeah. So for video stuff, it's miles better. And then you can even argue that the IS would it'll give you that extra stop of brightness too to be a 2.8 almost. You know what I mean? You could kind of get that from the four. Yeah, because if you're at the know. if you're at the four and it's say like two fiftieth of a second shutter speed, you could drop with IS. You could go to or no, sort of four. Oh, the image stabilizer. Yeah, you yeah, could yeah, drop yeah. down below your rule of, you know, oh, okay. whatever, 70 milliseconds yeah. to 70. So, so you could probably get the same brightness out of the 2 I've never tested that. See, I ended, <laughs> I ended up shooting in low light a lot. Yeah. So, like, that's a big deal for me. I'm like, okay, how much bright? Like, that's why out of all, like, the fancy glass, I got the 50 mil 1.8, the $100 yeah. cheapo. It's my go-to because it's so bright. I can get yeah. away with never having a tripod in, like, pitch black. 5,000 ISO, a 50th of a second shutter speed, 1.8. You can see. Yeah. Like, it's a great little piece of glass for that. So I'm thinking 70 to 200, 24 to 70, and the 50. But that's a big bag. I oh. think you do, like, instead of the 50, don't don't bother with it. Don't bother with primes. it at all? Yeah. The, th- the, thing I'm getting, the thing that makes me go back to the 50 
is it's little, it's light. I could toss it in a pocket. Like that one's not taking up much space. And if I'm shooting at nighttime or I'm walking around and it's super dark out, I could, even though I have the 50 mil in that 24 to 70, I don't have a 1.8. Yeah. And I couldn't go that bright, but I don't know. That's, that's where I'm at with it right now. Is do I go? And I mean, that I've I guess it depends on your look because mine, um, I don't mind a bunch of noise. Like the Canon, like the the, the Mark Three, them. Oh, it's got noise. amazing ISO performance. For yeah, sure. so the noise that comes up isn't even that bad. It's kind of grainy. It's like, yeah, it's yeah. like you almost, can work it with looks it. it looks like film grain, and it's so like when I was shooting all the the documentary stuff, I think I just had it um, where it was like I don't remember probably just like pin the ISO at like 800 or something and call it. I might right. have just left it at 6400 always. Really? I think that's what that I did. High. Is that what you shot with a, a 5D Mark III? Is that your? Yeah. Oh, that's my go-to too. It's 16 or 64. Wow. But I think on the on the, on the the tour, I let it just go. Auto itself, yeah. Yeah. Makes and sense. then I just, because then I was like, I so was not fighting with time. it as much. Yeah. And, uh, and if it would grain out it's like okay that's fine I, yeah I'm you, not gonna, you had to do it basically. i'm not coloring it after it's just it is what it is yeah those were kind of quick vlog style things was, this the production of those things was still really good though like, i really dug those is there plans to do some more of that i know there was the brings them to europe oh yeah there was that s- sort of thing but it just was too costly or what or is it yeah s- makes sense I mean, it was just the cost and like the um the value of it were they hoping to kind of bring in some ad revenue from the videos too is that hoping to be a thing maybe but that, i think that was kind of like a cause for contention because my idea of success for it was um i i thought it would have a lot more social impact like bring more people to the uh okay. youtube channel and it did yeah. i think it brought like two twenty thousand. i was saying not a lot of people were active on that channel really like he didn't do Before. much on it yeah because i think it was like forty thousand, and then now it's like Sixty-three. It blew up 000. pretty good in that in that time you were doing it. For but sure. I was like, no, it's going to be bigger than that. <laughs> and then, yeah, hundreds of thousands. It's going to be like this. Millions. Yeah. Yeah. And then like I think the views on it was maybe like thirty thousand between twenty and thirty thousand each per episode, episode kind of thing. Yeah. Um, I think it was just to bring more people to it. Like didn't they don't know who he is. But then it was Fair basically enough. it was your catering to. You're you're just playing to Devon fans, which is yeah. I guess you're not you're not expanding it too much. That's the thing I'm impressed with is the fact that he's carved out uh, uh, like a niche almost in this. Like, no bands are making any money anymore. Yet he's done like casualties of cool and like these weird projects that I dig. I totally yeah. do. And I guess it's kind of weird that I think that I like him so much that I don't think other people would, which is odd. But everyone seems to be kind of on board that it's gaining some serious traction as of yeah. late. It's pretty, I know I've read all kinds of things lately where he's talking about doing this crazy symphony and stopping doing DTP stuff or whatever is going on next, but you never know, and that's kind of the fun of it, right? Just always stay tuned for the next episode of the yeah. records, what's going to be next, right? Yeah. You I'm pretty stoked on hearing what... Apparently, I thought he was doing uh, the symphony thing, but then when I signed up for the Creative Academy thing, they are like, oh, he's doing a new DTP record, and that's going to be part of the course. And oh, like, yeah? Yeah, I was like, hey, can you announce that? Like, this <laughs> just seems like a weird way to have it leak out. That's what he said? Well, that's what it's been. It's written down in part of its core structure. Like, in the lectures, it said flat out, like, I don't think he said it out of his mouth, but there's been, he has another guy he does lectures with. His name's, like, uh, Frank, I think. And he's like, yeah, part of this will be Devin in the studio writing and recording the new DTP album, and you guys will be kind of the fly on the wall and seeing it from demo to kind of done. I'm like, say what now? Like, Interesting. Yeah, it's... I don't know. Maybe he's misspeaking and he's talking about the moth, or he's just talking about Devin demos. I think. Oh yeah. Or how? Like, From my understanding, like. Um, I was kind like, of assuming they were kind of going on pause in a bit. Was kind of the vibe that he's been giving off in interviews and stuff. He was kind of like, "Yeah, we're gonna do this all in a loop." I think it machine. changes every day. That's it. I didn't really <laughs> think so because, like, after I remember after um, I think it was after buy a thread. He's like, "Oh, I'm taking a break," and then like Epicloud came out and Casualties came out, and then after. Um, Retinal, I'm taking a break. And then the Royal Albert Hall, like the breaks seem to not really exist or last more than like a week maybe. So I don't know if you just can't take it for face value sometimes, but it it's it's hard it's hard to say. Fair enough. It's a lot going on, like I said, I'm sure. <laughs> a lot of pressure on to keep producing, so Yeah. Cool. I'm stoked for whatever comes back, so. Should we should we actually call it a quest okay. set before we got on it? I'm I'm down. I'll I gotta keep, go I gotta go eat something. I'll keep too. rambling, but we should probably <laughs> at some point 
We're at an hour 45. Jeez. It's fine. <laughs> I don't care who listens to it. If it's anybody's like, made it this far, comment. Like I say, it's just a reason to hang out talk, talk to people. Yeah, it's good. Did you unlock your phone, too? It's all gray. Or did you just turn the color off? No, I just turn it off. I don't... You can do I that? Yeah. I didn't know that. On iPhones? Yeah, I just don't have color on I dig it, but it'd drive me nuts because I like, photography stuff on it all day. So I would, like, try... Oh, it's, this is just, like, to not have... Um, oh, capitals beat the leaves. 2-1 in overtime. Oh, that that's shit. That's pretty tight. Leafs are out. There's only the Oilers in Ottawa left. Really? I'm not a big hockey guy, but I have been keeping up with that a bit. I'm only really I don't keep track in the playoffs. That's kind of what I'm at. Too. Like, usually I keep track in the playoffs if the Canucks are in because the whole town goes nuts. Yeah. That's about it. I just, I just, I don't care. It's like, I'll pick a couple teams. Well, this year I'm like, okay, I've been watching the Oilers all season, so. I'm oh, so you're like, a little more invested in them kind of thing? I, yeah. Like, but during the season, I just kind of keep tabs. I don't really pay much attention. Just check scores occasionally. Just see, like. See who's winning what. See who's doing what. And then playoffs, I'm just like, I'm fully invested. <laughs> you can't, well, you can't help it. Like, it's such a spectacle. It's so much point. better hockey. Really? You know? It's like, the, the, the quality of it's so much better. Well, there's pressure on them, I guess, right? Like, it's the, it's the playoffs. I'm even, like, watching the WHL and seeing what's happening, because Regina... <laughs> I had uh, something to say at the end, but I forgot what it was. It doesn't matter because I don't think anybody made it that far and is listening to this right now. So I can say whatever I want and it doesn't matter because you're not going to hear this. Uh, whatever, I am still go- I'll still do more of these because I'm starved for attention.